Hey, folks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. The statements in the following broadcast are not necessarily the opinions of the Madness Comic Network, its staff, sponsors, or contributors. This show is rated TVMA, as are all of them and all those other letters. Viewer discretion is highly advised, and, you know, just do what Doc says. Read that again. Peace, everybody. City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But damn, they have just. I mean, they just really stepping it up and on. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett, genuinely cutting. Um, but also funny and obviously just chaotic and, and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium.
And people, let me see if I can push the right freaking button this year. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Already a crap load of people watching on Twitter. Man, I'm about to just leave YouTube behind. I'm telling you. Not, not, not for you people watching on YouTube. We love you too. But man, I'm just saying. For the last couple of weeks, Twitter just been blowing up. I don't know why, but I like it. The more eyes we get on what you guys do, the better off we're, then, you know, what I'm doing is working, right? Uh, I see we got Mr. Big. We got Wayne. Mr. Big right here, right here. Oh, 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 man, right there, right there in the chat. Mr. Big, what's happening? Um, good to see you, man. Um, Lou Paws, yes. Uh, Wayne, I have over a thousand videos on Rumble and never got no fucking traction at all. Dude. I just gave up on that. <laughs> People got to actually watch, bro. If they ain't watching, then you're wasting your time on that platform. You know, uh, that's <laughs> over a thousand videos on Comic Talk with Pops Van Zandt on Rumble. Go check it out. Y'all go check it out. <laughs> Y'all start liking some of those videos and watching some of those videos. Maybe I'll put up some. That's what I got to say about that. Uh, we have a packed freaking show today. It's so packed. We're going to, we have to start early and we're going to end late. And I tell you. That's how it happens sometimes. Uh, our first guest is somebody that I actually met at a con and developed a, a relationship and friendship that way. It wasn't somebody that I met through the internet and then said, hey, come join our group. It was somebody I actually met at a con. So uh, I'm going to bring him out and introduce you all to Mr. Brian. E. Wow, what's happening, my friend? What's up? Hey, Pops, how you doing? It's all action, brother. It's all action. <laughs> yeah. I, I was... Uh, uh oh my head's... got my head cut off here a little. Cut my head off, yeah. All right. Glad <laughs> to be here, man. Hey, I'm, I mean, I'm, I've always wanted, since I met you, like, over a year ago, I've been wanting to get you out on the show, because what you do... I mean, look, I like your... Uh, your space station sci-fi book that you, you gave me the one to check out. I like the beginning of that. I like how that starts. But dude, this Chicago firefighter book, that's that's the one that drew me to your Detroit. table. Detroit. It's a de Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what drew me to your table. I was like, Brad, Brad, Brad. <laughs> When I first met you, that was the thing that drew me to your table. And then you started telling me about it. And I was like, oh, these are real stories. This is freaking awesome. So, you know, I want you to tell everybody a little bit about, you know, who you are, how you got involved in this. And uh, we'll we'll get some wins. We'll show some stuff off. You want what, Well, that what reaction. Would, what would you like me to show that? off first? Off? What, what would you like me to show off? Uh, oh, to show uh, if you could if you show uh, staunch ambition with the uh, Azurus character looking at the Earth, that's on my uh, website somewhere. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Do you, you want to drop your link in the private chat to that website so I can go find this stuff while you're? Uh, he, you could find it. Just type in uh, Brian. I, it'd be good for everybody to to hear this. Um, everything I have, social media, my website is simple. It's Brian with an I. E is an easy arts, simply Brian E arts. So that's the website and my social media. I, I, I had a bunch of names and I found that that was not being used on all the sites. So I was like, cool, I'm going to go with this. It's easy to remember. And I started doing staunch ambition and I, I had the website staunch ambition and everything was staunch ambition. And, and the, I kind of had a similar reaction that you did with this firefighter thing. Cause a firefighter pointed out to me, nobody does graphic novels and firefighters. And, um, it just it stuck with me. I thought about it my whole life buying comic books and maybe there was some cartoon, you know, kids books or something. <clears throat> and I did some research and found a few graphic novels out there. And I just thought this is ridiculous. So I, I took a break from my sci-fi book and, and did this, uh, Inferno city firehouse. And 
true stories from real Detroit firefighters. My grandfather, my childhood, I lived at the Detroit, Detroit firefighter. I did ride alongs with them. And, and I, I combined all these true stories into a narrative. And it, this book has been a game changer because like your reaction, it's so unique and compelling. It's uh, so if, yeah, you could see there that uh, these are, I think these are videos. If you scroll up, um, the trailers, if you uh, scroll up, so you can go into my art. The one, go down a tad. Yeah, go into my art there. And I can show people where, like, this is some stuff at the top there. There's Gary Cooper and um, um, Sean Connery, a couple things I did for college. But if you scroll down, this is all my art. I did everything on these pieces. But this piece here you're seeing, this story, Staunch Ambition, started out as a, as a when I was in college, as a story called Half-Life. And it was very um, cliche, I think. And it could have been good, maybe. But we tried to do, you know, my brother and I tried doing it back then. And then uh, if you scroll down, I, I, you know, was getting older and had kids and wasn't working in comics. But I wanted to take that version and do it like a really tight, detailed version of it so i did this piece there the cover of the preview issue of azarus contemplating the earth and uh, that story just turned into this huge epic sci-fi supernatural so if you go back you can see i was started working on staunch ambition and in the middle of that uh yeah hit the back you could hit the back tab and see um go up to or yeah go up this you know there's a bunch of stuff here you get an idea of what i do i i, I started with staunch ambition and then i did inferno city firehouse and now i'm working on blood of the baptist and i'm doing music original music i produce or work with people um and worked on a movie uh so you could go through the website and you can kind of see my portfolio or you can see some of the other projects i worked on if you click on inferno city firehouse the one the book you were raving about that cover there is by neil anderson a uh, michigan guy i'm a michigan guy look so if you click on that just look at it just freaking look at it does this not look old school firehouse this is so dude, i love this. yeah you know yeah it's uh it's dealing with some real life difficult stuff like one of the things my grandfather went through was tough I mean, he, he was an old, tough school guy, and he, uh, my aunt told me that she only saw her dad cry twice, and one time was uh, when his wife was sick. My grandmother, she lived to be 97 years old, so she uh, was fine, but he, he, the thing we put in his book that he went through is a pu uh, punch in the gut. It was hard for us to just do it as a story. <laughs> I Erwin, I remember the artist, my interior artist is just like, man, this is tough pages to do, so... The book's ultimately about hope, but it's dealing with some good and bad uh, things that uh, firefighters go through. So, dude, um, Wayne, uh, this guy Wayne, he he's writing stories about the mafia. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Was there ever any kind of like what you would say like weird connections to the firehouse to the more corrupt side of the city government? I do deal with uh, the brokenness um, yeah. and uh, I worked with uh, Mike Nevin on uh, go back, go down, go down. I'll show you where the firefighter idea started. So I showed you where, where I did the sci-fi book, the drawing I did go to, no, go up to where it says my colors. Okay. So these are the pieces that I colored someone drew. So some of those I colored or all of these I colored, of course, but um, if you scroll down to that Detroit or that Detroit one, click on that. This when I lived in Detroit, I lived with a Detroit firefighter, um, Harry Nan and Mike Nevin and Harry worked on the uh, monthly magazine. And, and and like the Super Bowl, the Detroit Firefighters International Convention would go from city to city. Um, and it was coming to Detroit, Cobo, Cobo Hall that year way back in the day when I was in college and Mike Nevin wanted to get, he saw these uh, couple comic books I worked on that I colored. Uh, they were also on this page, but uh, um, the, the vortex ones you saw when, when we did that last show that uh, Alan Stewart did. But anyways, he saw those and he's like, man, I want you guys to do a sweet, you know, the GM building back then it was a Renaissance 
building in the uh, Renaissance Center and uh, they have a dragon wrapped around it, a firefighter going one on one. So I had the guy I was working with on Vortex, Matt Martin, did the uh, uh, drawing and inks. And then I did a little bit of the inks and then uh, did the airbrush, the uh, coloring. And we did this poster for the official, you know, International Firefighter firefighters convention and then they did shirts and this is the poster that gave the one firefighter john who told me i should do a graphic novel on him like 20 some years later so i looked up mike nevin who i worked with this on the poster with this and he was the president of the detroit firefighters association at that time and i'm like you're never gonna guess who this is and I told him about the idea of the graphic novel and he just was like, oh, this is perfect, man. He's like, you know, we live in a day and age where graphic novels are becoming movies and it's just people understand the significance of the art of a graphic novel, the power of it. It's like it's pretty much just storyboarding for a visual media. So um, he uh, he really supported me and uh, uh, set me up with uh, the people I uh, did ride alongs with and everything. I have his likeness in the book. And then Metro Times did a uh, um, article on Inferno City Firehouse and uh, a director in Canada was uh, is directed, was directing a do documentary called Florian's Nights uh, about firefighters who ride motorcycles. So if you go out of here and go back, I can show you a little bit of the Florian's Nights. But this uh, director, Pan, working on Florian's Nights documentary saw the article i saw scroll um i think up maybe down i don't yeah yeah there you go florian's nice if you go into the movies florian's nice so so uh j.a defoy and i worked on this movie we did the official poster and you can see i did some designs for their like you the youtube thing and if you scroll down you see the official poster that j.a defoy and i worked on that's the back of my son's head we use for reference but it's about firefighters who ride motorcycles to deal with their PTSD or uh, their stress. And there's actual science to that. They get into that in the documentary. But um, so Pan came to my house and filmed me and my book for, for hours. And then they also, I connected them up with uh, Mike Nevin and, and they did ride alongs with the um, Detroit firefighters. Some of the guys in my book are in this documentary and it's uh it was quite a ride man this like i said this firefighter book and you know it's opened so many doors and it's just been a game changer because it's it's such a, a needed genre that's neglected in our in graphic novels that's for sure that's that's what i was saying there's like there was a big firefighter police um push after 9 11. there was a lot yes, of comics yeah. that featured them and then it just kind of went away even like the the TV shows that focused on like EMTs, like emergency and stuff, that stuff all just kind of went away. There wasn't nobody, there wasn't nobody glorifying the firefighters, true heroes, people with bravery that run toward the damage. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, any given day, they they could be uh, putting their life on the line. And uh, yeah, Joe Casada did some stuff during uh, 9/11, and uh, there's still a few shows out there. But but uh, it's but it's not like if you know. I mean, that used to be like it was big for for that period. You know, it was like it really brought yes. home, you know, what these guys put on the line, right? Okay, it really. Brought oh yeah, that home. and it it's kind of it doesn't yeah. exist anymore. It really should. And like I said, you know, when I saw your book, I was, I wasn't looking at anything. I wasn't even looking at you when I walked up to your table. I was just dragging Brad behind me, and I was pointing at that Chicago, or I mean, Detroit. Oh book, yeah. You know. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. I just saw the cover, and I was like, Brad, come here. <laughs> yeah, something unique. Um, yeah, the uh, this uh, Florian's Nights is uh, streaming on it's uh, it's on uh, Prime Video and different uh, outlets, but uh, it's uh, it deals a, a little bit with the uh, 9/11 too, because uh, obviously that was such a huge significance to the firefighter community. Yeah, I mean, give uh, <laughs> if you've never had to call the fire department, yeah. stuff like uh, yeah. this. That it's it's stuff like this that that makes you aware of what they do you know i mean yeah you know not everybody's ever had to call them 
you know, and and really see them in action or, or see, you know, like you said, that takes some serious bravery. There, there was a huge fire. Oh, man. There. My son's work, man, and everybody was running away from it. And that, that he grabbed fire extinguisher and ran toward it and put it out, probably saved the whole factory, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, wow. it was like one of those things where it was going to blow up if nobody did anything, you know. Well, the firefighters are dealing with fires, especially in Detroit. Um, uh, they're dealing with drug overdoses or they're dealing with uh, domestic things and car accidents. And when I was doing the ride alongs, I got, a, you know, got a taste of that. Um, so you know, they never know when, what's going to happen or when. But uh, what's that like? You got to respect that. On the ride along, it's like. Are there times when they're like, hey, you stay back, you stay back there, you know, or whatever, or did you, did you have pretty much free reign to, to move with them as they move? Oh, no, man, they would just throw me in the fire and then rescue me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> so, the yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much was uh, watching it and they were very, they were very open. I was nervous. I was very nervous to do this book because I'm not a firefighter. My grandfather's 26 years Detroit firefighter. I dedicate the book to him and, and show a picture of him and in, in the inside cover. But, but I, you know, I wanted to be real respectful and true to what their the firefighters go through, what they do, their lingo. And they, you know, not as an outsider, I was uh, really nervous about that, but they were very open armed. I, I had a couple of issues with some firefighters. There was some wording in the Metro times uh, article that one of the firefighters didn't like, because it was kind of like, it, it was like, it was almost like it was specifically talking about that particular firehouse. And that's not what the, the article should have been. And yeah, I'm burning it at both ends, uh, uh, writing the book and, and, and doing the research and then doing this uh, interview for Metro times. And I called the, uh, uh, journalist right away, Steve, and, and says, yeah, you need to reword this one line here. And, uh, <laughs> so it's not like focused on just this firehouse. I mean, I use a fire, you know, firehouse, as the setting and, and whatnot, but the, the stories range from all kinds of different firefighters, not just that firehouse. And uh, so you got your heroes and you got firefighters who struggle, um, but they were, they were very open. I mean, playing ping pong, eating dinner is a massive, uh, you know, thing for the firefighters and have, you know, cooking a great meal and having food and playing cards and stuff like that on downtime, of course. But, but um uh, yeah, I was I for a time there. I was at the house, spent the night several times, and, and when the alarm went off, would put my suit on and jump in the truck, man. And and that was a experience just driving through the streets of Detroit, you know, with the traffic. And so many people do not get out of the way when you're when the fire truck is, uh, even with the sirens raring. That's that's not just Detroit. That's every city I ever lived in, man. It's like they be jamming their music or whatever they don't even hear it <laughs> don't even hear it you know yeah but yeah man um you got music for graphic novels i just dropped the playlist to all your trailers over here in, in the chat uh you guys oh, go look at the trailers for for the staunch ambition for the firehouse uh you can go watch all the everything that's over there uh trailer for the movie i think's in there too right yeah yeah, you can see the trailer. Uh, you know, there's a link to that. Um, yeah, the the first two books I have out, Staunch Ambition and uh, Inferno City Firehouse, come with music, just with it. It's added bonus. The next book I'm working on, Blood of the Baptist, I'm currently working on. The soundtrack for that is going to be a, a leagues uh, above. I mean, the music's always quality, but this is going to be produced by, uh, you know, uh, Steve... Uh, Stephen uh, Luiki in Nashville, and I'm working with Cindy Morgan, two-time Grammy-nominated, 14-time Dove Award winner. So this is going to be a legit album of its own where I'll be selling that and with the book as well. We're going to do an original soundtrack for this book on the life and death of John the Baptist, who is – always a character in the, you know, in Jesus's story where he, you know, he's the cousin, he baptizes Jesus. But John, if you know anything about him, which we know is his life was massively dramatic, tragic, and, and powerful and effective. I mean, he set up the whole ministry of Christ and 
I don't want to spoil <laughs> the ending, but if anyone knows their biblical history, John's ending is as is, is dramatic as Shakespeare or Greek mythology, but this is dealing with real history. It's going to be a historical fiction on the life and death of John the Baptist. So there'll be some fictional characters kind of guiding us through the story. But as you can see, the interior art is magnificent. Some of the pages here. So and if you scroll down, you can see who I'm. We have 63 people watching right now. We have 45 oh, people watching on Critical Blast Twitter. I think that's because RJ is going to be on the show later. He's the one that runs Critical nice. Blast. So, but we have 40 people, 45 people watching from his Twitter channel. Y'all rock. Yeah. What's up? Nice Check to meet you here. all. Yeah. This, this is why I bring this stuff out here, man. Look at this stuff. Yeah, yeah, you look at that page. It, it's it takes place while John's imprisoned by uh, Herod Antipas, and uh, this uh, uh, mystery character is just kind of visiting him and intrigued with John and Jesus, and not sure what you know if they are really you know prophets and whatnot. So um, it takes place while uh, John's in prison, and we kind of go through some of his life. There's a twist ending at the end that's. Uh, dramatic ties into the history if you scroll down you'll see another that's a j.a defoy and uh and i mostly jay worked on the one of the uh, covers there of john's demise spoilers but so john never drank and uh was um lived out in the wilderness like a you know a monk and he uh wasn't a drinker but um the idea i had was uh when when they're drunk and Herod's having a party. The the guard comes to him and offers him a drink, and John denies it, and the guard gets indignant. It kind of shows the contrast. I mean, we don't know if that's how that happened, but right. it emphasizes what we do know. He was not a drinker, and they, they were all drunk when John dies <laughs> and uh, gets beheaded. So, so I got a the question. point of is this that, piece. Is that like watercolor or colored pencil? What is, what? That's oil painting. So the original is oil painting. I got it in my other room. Yeah. Yeah. Jay A. Defoe. I've worked with him on several things and Jay is just magnificent. He does oil. He's a traditional artist, fine art. He'll do comic book art. He could do anything. So I work with amazing talent. You know, I do some art as we've seen, but, um, and I write it. I had some co-writers in the beginning. Uh, John McNichol and um, my ed my uh, one editor Leah Letterman she uh, wrote like three four pages for me, but I I decide I just is like I I'm just writing this on my own. This book here, The Blood of the Baptist, I'm working with Jimmy Aiken, who's like a modern day Thomas Aquinas. I mean the guy's brilliant and he's a famous international speaker apologist, and so he's helping me with the uh, biblical and historical aspects of the. Uh, uh, this book because I, you know, I, as nervous as I was to do the firefighter book to be true to the firefighters, <laughs> this is, can you imagine this is sacred material, yeah, historical. Like, I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God help me. Uh, you know, I'm a sinner, but, um, I got a story to tell. So, oh, so Emily Zelasco did the one on the left there, the, uh, iconography lookings. Uh, I colored that, but she's magnificent. Uh, Bill Embel did the one on the right. But uh, uh, the idea with the wings is uh, wings represents messenger, like angel. The, the the word angel means messenger of God. So angels were depicted with wings, not because they physically have wings necessarily, but because um, wings represented an, an antiquity messenger. So John sometimes is shown with wings because he was a messenger. And yes, this uh, then um, we we have the like you you started with this, but I've got to actually show it. I have to actually no, give it to nice. Okay, issue number one. Yeah, staunch ambition. And Freddie um, Williams the second did the black and white, and I colored it. Freddie Williams is magnificent. This, you, as you can see, in house ads. That's what. Check this out. Guys. Yeah. Posters this, and this is good stuff. And uh pretty much every see this 
I'm going to tell you what this the feel this gives me. This gives me a Simonson feel. Oh, with really? The, okay. When you with the the splash pages, they just feel like water. Oh, I don't know why. So. You know, um, it's it's just something I love about the way he did certain ones. It's like they were. It was always one panel in a giant page, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's that gives me that Simonson feel. I like that. So. Yeah, that's that's a kind of a cool double page spread reveal of where the space station's at, the most hostile environment known to man. But uh, yeah, you said you you really enjoyed the beginning. I was like, wait a minute, wait, you didn't like the uh, ending. I see why now you said that because you have issue one. Okay, <laughs> that's, it, that's all I got. It's issue one. All right, right. Let's go. I got it. Makes sense. Yeah, the story definitely gets, you know, it, it gets better and better as it goes because, you know, you start to get into the in nitty gritty, the character development, and there's some pretty sweet um, cliffhangers at, at at the end of each issue, that one, and is, as you go, you know, just like any good show or any any good book, <laughs> you, you just get pulled in. Yeah, I, I was very much, very much into it. Uh, like I said, man, look. Brian, I'm a broke ass. If I wasn't, I'd have bought everything on your table. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I no, think you got a budget. Yeah, I know. I think Brad bought it all anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to have to buy. See, but I appreciate like, your support and your enthusiasm, though, man. We work well, hard on this stuff. I get the first one right. I'll go home. I'll read it. If I like it, then I'm like, hey, yo, Brad, you got to let me read the rest of that series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome man so you know, it happens that way sometimes he's a good dude man it, look we would never met if it wasn't for brad i'll tell you that flat out because he's the one that oh yeah he's the one that gets me to all the local cons you know that's and, cool what's uh are you gonna be at motor city comic con no i doubt i'll be there i'm thinking about lansing i'm thinking about Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids. You know, they do the two different locations. I'm not doing those two this year because I'm in production of this Blood of the Baptist. Dude, this Blood of the Baptist is – I'm already meeting with movie producers. Um, I could be, I could be naive and putting a cart before the horse, but this book is – the idea is just – it's similar to the Firefighter, but like – a little step up because we're dealing with, you know, sacred scripture and something that changed the world, you know, like, I mean, like, unlike anything. And so I'm, I'm, I totally envision this as a movie and I'm going to do everything I can. I will get the meetings, <laughs> but we'll see if uh, we can get, it's hard to get a movie made, but, but uh, this book I think is, needs to be made into a movie. It's going to be special. And I'm going to, I'm going all in on it, man, with the, like the, soundtrack and the uh the book is going to be epic so you can see this, the interior art and uh, covers are so far how dramatic it's going to be so yeah, and you get you can get a little sense of the music i have with some of my book trailers there so uh, i put the music in some of my book trailers i think that firefighter uh trailer turned out really i mean all of the trailers are cool but I got goofy trailers of me. If you, if you go down, I got ones of me talking to myself and interviewing my nephew like he's my marketing uh, guru. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I like to do some funny stuff. Sometimes, sometimes you got to go to the kids for marketing ideas, dude. Yeah, really? look, 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 I got, uh, I got uh, what's his name from Ghost? Uh, uh, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Passed away. He's going to promote my book for me as a ghost. Oh, I was on the Babylon Bee a couple of times too. If anyone's a fan of that, satire, satire news are huge. And like he, they've interviewed Elon Musk and and uh, uh, John Cleese and all kinds of big time people. I was on their show a couple of times. It's all good stuff, bro. It's all really good stuff. Just all over the place up in here. Oh, on Amazon. You yeah, can you can buy. I have a I have a secured a secure store on my white website, but plus is also some of the books are on Amazon as well. So, some of the posters you can get on my website. 
if you order from my website, because I, I, I'll have your email, I'm able to send you the music that comes with it. Because through Amazon, I'm not able to send the music because I, I, it's kind of a second party. But but uh, if you're interested in the books and you want the music, the soundtrack to come with it, then uh, you order through my website and uh, it will. Uh, I'll be able to send you the soundtrack. So it's good music too. I bet it is, man. It's like uh, I do want to play. I do want to play a trailer or something though. At least play yeah, the play the Inferno City Firehouse. Scroll, scroll up. Yeah. I'll tell you where. Go. go yeah, there. That one. Click, oh, no. Yeah, click on uh, book trailers. It's not that long, and it's pretty dramatic. It's pretty good. Did that open up uh, YouTube in another tab? Yeah, the Motor City Edition. Um. Well, the book trailer one should open up a. Uh, YouTube or, or even scroll yeah, up more. YouTube, it's like I'm just saying. There, there's one titled the Motor City Edition trailer. There's one titled teaser. Uh, yeah, we'll there's just a go. Motor City one. Yeah. Okay, we'll do, we'll go. With yeah, that. but we can't we we can't I see got, it on the screen. I know. I gotta set it up. Oh, okay. I was just just making sure. Gotta stop sharing here. Gotta go share over there. Here, I'll act it out. <laughs> <laughs> You like music? I'd be like uh, Michael Keaton in uh, Night Shift. Let me get through this uh, this this ad first, and then. Oh, the ads! Yeah, you gotta get ad blocker, man. It's free and uh, it blocks it blocks ads, a lot of ads. That, it's awesome. My son showed me it. I thought ad blocker was just kind of some kind of gimmick thing, but if you get ad blocker. It's uh, All right. sweet. All right, here we go. Let's see. Make sure it plays the sound and all that. All right, are you ready? I am. So uh, I like all genres of music if it's good, but so that's a little bit of like a techno y type thing, but <laughs> dramatic. So what else you got? I know you got more. What else you got? See what else thing, I got? Oh I never want that? I say one thing I always tell people when they come on my show is I'm going to get to a point and I'm going to ask you, is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to cover? Oh, yeah. Because I never want guests to leave and, and be like, oh, man, I didn't get to talk about this. I didn't get to talk about that. Because that's happened to me before. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do that. Yeah. Talk about I everything that. I wanted to cover. So I always go back to you and go, did we did we blow anything? Did we miss anything? Is there anything you really want to talk about that we haven't talked about? And if so, oh man, I you we've know, covered so we've covered some of my uh, my uh, 
covered my my two books that are out. Staunch ambition. I, I give you a little. I you know just so people understand, they saw some of it. But staunch ambition's general concept is: what if we entered the supernatural through advanced technology? Is the general idea, of course, driven by all these characters in that context. And um, uh, we covered Infernal City Firehouse. I do have uh, the uh, posters. If uh, anyone's, I don't sell the large posters through the uh, internet or the mail. Um, cause it would be too difficult to, I, they're on a, like a thicker stock and they don't roll up. <laughs> so I don't want to be mailing out these giant things, but, uh, well, I, 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 I the, smell, I, I'm, I'm trying to click on that? the graphic novel link and it's giving me a, uh, Oh, the staunch ambition one. Yeah. I, I got to call them. The, something happened with the one link to the staunch ambition. I got to take care of that. It's Actually, not, I forgot about that. It, yeah. It's, it's not, just the stuff. So. Would, would you it's like just to a staunch ambition one no it's yeah something's messed up with it because that was my it's it gotten messed up because that was my main website and then i had it transferred over to brian e arts and it's the way they did it it it's it's like they sometimes act like that one's still the main one and i'm only paying for the main one but then they they're they got i gotta call them and get that switch up but but uh i apologize for that but well, uh, I've got um, all the trailers lined up. If there's a certain trailer for that book you'd like to play, we can do that too. After you, you know, uh, staunch ambition. Up. Yes, uh, staunch ambition. Um, yeah, I mean uh, the trailer issue three is pretty good. I mean they're all they're all fun. Um, issue three, uh, the trailer is I, I kind of like that one. Or the one meet you could. Try playing the one there where I'm talking to myself. Let's, let's see how that comes off. The audio is not the greatest because I just recorded that in my living room, but it's kind of a goof. It's serious at times, but it's also comedy, I think. So this one, the uh, you you know. Know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that one. Let's see how that sounds. It's nerve wracking coming up with a good video for your Kickstarter. A celebrity to hold your book and talk about how much they love it. Yeah, right. Who? Oh, sorry. Now get J.J. Abrams. Oh, how about Chewbacca? Oh, how about a dead celebrity? If you could get a dead celebrity to hold your fucking talk about it, you know, like a ghost, you're insane. But that would be pretty cool. Well, tell them that you've already invested thousands of dollars of your own money, working sleepless nights, slaving over this book. I've done all the heavy lifting. They don't have to invest thousands of dollars to stay up endless nights. They just need to... No, forget it. <laughs> You're wrong. People give crabs every day all over the world. Sometimes twice. Have you ever come up with one good idea in your life? Oh, uh, well, uh, let's just tell them all the great talent we have working with us. We got Freddie Williams II, Koi Fan. They work with Marvel, DC, Disney, Image. Freddy just did this Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. We've got Sony PlayStation concept artist Tyler Thal doing all the main art. We've got Erwin Arosa. We've got John McNichol, author of the Young Chesterton Chronicles. We've got Elements of Cadence, Jason Connolly, writing original music for the book. And then we got Steve Jobs, Thomas Edison, and the man who invented the wheel doesn't get any better than that. This is another song. possibility but don't get lost down a troubled road some won't be so kind and some you'll never know don't give in you can't give up take another chance
Yeah. Hey, you get two two videos for the price of one. That's the uh, Elements of Cadence uh, song. A couple of the uh, songs were, I I had a couple melodies. I have some melodies that I mess around with on a piano. I'm not a musician, but I, I kind of tinker around with it, music. And uh, I always dreamed of giving my music over to actual uh, musicians. So I gave to elements of cadence and to jason Connolly, and they came up with a couple pieces that were based off of my melodies so it's cool what else anything yeah. else you want to play i'll play it all i don't care i got all day uh all <laughs> right I, I i got another cool here's another cool thing one of the songs is done by halia jones who is a, a singer songwriter director model actor she was on uh if, if people are graphic novel uh uh enthusiasts they would probably have heard of lock and key the graphic novel by uh, uh joe hill is it joe hill or jonah but uh the son of stephen king and they did the uh, netflix did lock and key um the uh successful lock and key show and halia jones was on there and i met her on a podcast she does music so she uh contributed a song for my one soundtrack. So if you see that video, I think it's like three down with Halea there. We, you can see a little bit of uh, Halea talking. <laughs> She's hilarious. Um, uh, uh, about working with uh, me on Staunch Ambition. I think it's me first and then it goes into Halea. Here we go. Hello, all you beautiful independent comic book fans. It's Brian Lau and I'm back at it again with Staunch Ambition's epic double size issue four. If you're new to Staunch Ambition, this is the perfect time to come aboard. Because now you can get the full season one story either as individual issues or the combined 128 full color remastered trade. This trade is going to come with everything. You're going to get the full story. You're going to get all of the standard and variant covers, remastering the lettering, the dialogue, the colors. You have bonus material, beautiful new wraparound cover. And if that wasn't enough. Hey. It's Leah. You may know me as Eden Hawkins from Netflix's Lock and Key, but I'm incredibly excited to partner with Brian over at Staunch Ambition to bring you music a little bit different from what Eden Hawkins is typically used to. I'm also incredibly honored to be illustrated as Commander Ryle, and I'm very excited for you all to watch to watch the series when you got to read the series because it's a comic book. Anyway, I hope you really enjoy Staunch Ambition and the music that I am working hard to put together for it. And make sure to share it with your friends and family and fellow comic book lovers. And let's get this thing off the ground and up into outer space. It was so cheesy, but it worked. Okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> Did this animation. <laughs> and as always, I want to offer you <laughs> Kickstarter supporters. She's hilarious. A book that no one else can get outside of Kickstarter. We have the variant cover of issue four. These are numbered and they're only available during the campaign. So make sure you pick up a copy before the campaign ends. We also have a few left of the previous issues. Those will only be available on the add-ons after the campaign when you're filling your reward out. In fact, if there's any item that you wish was in your rewards, you'll have the opportunity to add it after the campaign. I want to give a special yeah, thanks to all this. my loyal and patient fans. After issue three of Staunch, <laughs> I changed gears and I did this one-shot graphic novel, True Stories from Real Detroit Firefighters, called Infernal City Firehouse. If you don't have a copy of it, I highly recommend picking it up in this Kickstarter. I have some exciting movie news that I'm going to be able to share with you soon, as soon as I get permission. So stay tuned. Thank you for checking us out and all your support. Take care. If that wasn't an <coughs> wow. <laughs> Doing those videos, as you can see, Halea is a professional actress. And she's like, no, this, why is this so hard? And it made me feel better. Because when I do these like Kickstarter videos, man, I got to, I, I got to, 
do it, do it again, do it. And, you know, you, you stumble over your words. You, I don't know why, but, you, you know, you kind of want to get out something, certain information. Well, see, and, for uh, me, it's hilarious because when I make spots, I go in the stream yard backstage, I hit record, and I do it. If I write it up yeah. first, I'll mess it up 30 times. But if I just go do it, yeah. I'm fine. No um, it's, no it's, does, no, you know what I mean? I just have to just do it live off the top of my head. That's the way I, I know. It's like it's like me right now explaining the book and I can get into it and all that, but but uh when this it, doing the Kickstarter when there's certain things you must get, you know, and you forget and you you really want it to be polished, you know. Yeah, maybe it's better to just have fun and be free with it, but I don't know it's what the trick is. Do it. That's, I get super frustrated if I'm trying to say something specific and it, it doesn't come out right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then it doesn't come out right. Or, or I'll mess something up or, you know, something will go boom upstairs or who knows, just any, you know, uh -huh. I'm trying to do it that way. That's what happens. But if I just come out yeah, and go, uh -huh. okay, I'm going to do a quick 30 second Roku spot. I can do a quick 30 second Roku spot in one, maybe two takes. You know, I mean, right. just boom, it's good. But man, if I think about it and write it up ahead of time, I will screw it up over and over and over again. No, you know? that's I, you can. I, I'm in between takes. I'd be like, you know, I'll do the take and I'll be like, damn it, son of a bitch, and swearing. And then I have to go back, pause it, hit record again, and and I fake laugh to get my mind back into like you know out of the frustration of like ah oh, i screwed that take up and to back into the just a happy okay let's do this thing and it's like uh yeah i gotta do it different you know we'll see i i'm looking back at all the work i've been doing over the years and i'm like wow you know it takes time doing these like, like i would buy a uh, template for these animations but i know enough of I, i've done animation and so I go in and I structure, I change it, I tweak it. And so um, it's a lot of work, even with the template, to go in and do this animation. And I'm looking at all this stuff that I've done over the years, and I'm I'm thinking about the stuff I still want to do. And I'm like, oh, I'm crazy. I must be crazy. <laughs> but it's fun when you're done. Crazy about anything. What's that? I see, I see books, movies, and posters. You're not crazy about any of that. Oh man, it's it's nice when it's done though. You know, you can look back and go, yeah, I did something, and, and do something that I'm proud of. You know, like the quality, I couldn't be happier. I could brag about the quality because I work with a lot of great talent. So, but uh, I, it's like I, it, we we do quality is I would say I'm just independent publisher at this point, but the quality is as good as Marvel, DC, Disney, anything, any any of the big uh, publishers out there. So. But yeah, it's hard to do, man. Money, time. I got one right here. They're, they're definitely nice quality books. Very nice. And uh, oh yeah. And even even with your signature on it, it's still a really nice quality book. <laughs> oh yeah, you got something there, man. When that when I die, and that's a movie. <laughs> we'll see, well, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that movie made. I'm really gonna try. Yeah, let's have the movie without the dying part, right? You do that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that sounds like a plan. I'll do that. It's God like some friends that they're doing comic series that are like projected out 60, 70 books still, right? And it's like, man, okay. I'm not going to live long enough to read all these books, man. <laughs> 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 You know. Well, I've been I've been working on Staunch, and then I did the firefighter book, and I worked on some music in the movies, and then and then I started on Blood of the Baptist. But when I do Blood of the Baptist, my plan is okay. I'm not going to start my next book. I'm just going to go, excuse me, all in on focusing on marketing, getting those meetings, see if I can get a TV show or or a movie made. Because um, I believe, you know, I know what a good movie is. I know what a good book is. And this is going to be a, and this is the thing with the sci-fi looks great and all that, but it's like, there's a lot of sci-fi and nobody has any connection to it. Staunch ambition. What is this? It looks cool, but there's no emotional connection. When I did that firefighter book, I just did it because I felt called to do it. You know, having my grandfather as a firefighter, 
being friends and living with firefighters, doing work for them and going, wow, no one's doing books on firefighting. I just did it. But what I realized is when I did that book, there's this instant emotional connection to it like you had or so many people have because they know a firefighter, they are one, or they just respect first responders. And that I didn't anticipate this emotional connection to it like something you know, I, I, it's almost like that's brilliant because I would have did it on purpose for that reason, but that's not why I did it. I just did it because I wanted to tell some cool, true stories about, you know, real heroes. And that's what I believe the same thing. There's going to be this connection with the blood of the Baptist for that same reason. So all these years I've been doing books and reading books and, you know, what works and what's unique, this blood of the Baptist and the Inferno city firehouse, I have a unique appeal that, I think needs to be done. People are going to want it. They're going to be buying. I got tons of people waiting for this blood of the Baptist already. And, uh, and, and it's going to be successful. And then the, you know, then I'll be able to like, bring that to the table when I'm pitching it as a movie. Beautiful stuff, guys. You got to go check it out, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what happened to RJ. Somebody rattle RJ's cage. <laughs> RJ, is he? He's supposed to follow me, isn't he? Well, Bill is supposed to be on here too, but Bill just said that he's still on the road, hasn't made it home yet. Uh, but you know, uh, we should still have RJ here. Mm. RJ, <laughs> RJ, I'm trying talking, to think of I'm, like a, you keep talking. I'm gonna rattle your phone for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, and you can see I got some other original art. The uh, Spider-Man taking Nightcrawler on <laughs> in basketball, just because I love Spider-Man and basketball, and so uh, that's another one that uh, um, J. A. Defoy did. Like, can you imagine? He did those oil paintings, but he can also do stuff like Spider-Man Nightcrawler. I mean, the guy's just so versatile. Uh, so I'm I'm currently working on a football one, superheroes. So it's going to be uh, Captain America is the quarterback throwing the football. Spider-Man's coming in after Captain, pulling the shield away. You got Thor and Hawk going head to head in the, in the front lines. Of, uh, and, and then you've got Deadpool swinging a you know, sword at the football in midair. And then you're going to have Storm kind of lift, floating off the ground, trying to go in to catch the ball. So this is going to be kind of fun football superhero action. So that poster will be uh, that'll be coming out soon. I can see it now. You got Quicksilver as a receiver. <laughs> Quicksilver, yeah. I was thinking of having Deadpool as a like a cheerleader on a that <laughs> on like a been. skirt. You could, yeah, you could put him in a skirt <laughs> on the sidelines. He'd have been just fine with some pom poms. You know um, what they uh -huh. did to him. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some of those covers are, uh, you got the one right in the middle, Inferno City Firehouse, the main cover is done by Clayton Crane. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Clayton Crane, but that guy is just. Yeah, familiar, a little bit. Clayton Crane's d known for doing Spider-Man and, and uh, Venom and all that. Mm -hmm. So so to be, I was a huge fan of his and to be able to work with him a couple times. He also did my cover to Staunch Ambition issue three. But Erwin Arosa, if you look at his art, go back to uh, oh, go back, go back to Blood of the Baptist, uh, or where? Yeah, go to the, go back to Blood of the Baptist, and just Erwin Arosa is not only one of the greatest talents out there. Those those pages there, you see, he does. Um, he's just one of the nicest and greatest guys. He's become a great friend. He's worked on me on all three of my books. Um, so. We're starting. Uh, I'm get. I'm getting close uh, to doing the Kickstarter for this book. I might go with a publisher. We'll see. But uh, this, I, I, I really want to go. And I, I want to do the. Like I said, I'm doing the soundtrack. But I'm also, I want to do a serious video for one of the songs. Like I mean, as good quality as you can get. You know. Like the stuff I've been showing you, but uh, uh, and have that as another thing to pitch for the movie to give them a, like it's obviously focused on the music, but it, I, I want to like video some of the like um, 
happenings, uh, you know, things in the book, you know, maybe pages of the book, but then actually get some actors and, and do some scenes live action. And that was going to cost a lot of money to do it right. Right. You know, doing movies or animation is expensive, but, but I'm crazy. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in and, uh, but I don't want to have a crappy video, man. It's gotta be, <laughs> it's gotta be something that's impressive, beautiful, amazing art. And then on the right there, we got um, Jeff Von Buskirk, Buskirk uh, doing, I I'll give a little idea what happens with the book. It's going to be kind of meta. In fact, I got a, here, you can see, put me up on the screen here and I'll show you, got a little mock-up. This is the trade. So you got issue one, but this is staunch, all of the books as we saw in the trailer. And uh, Erwin and Rosa did the cover and I did the coloring for the cover. It's a wraparound cover. And uh, so I was using this as like, okay, imagine this is the uh, blood of the Baptist. So what's going to happen is around page 75 or so of the story, you got, you saw Irwin's, Rosa's art and it's just realistic, gritty life. But then John talks about that he had this vision because he says that um, in scripture, he says that he had, he was told that the one who the dove or the spirit comes down on, that will be the Messiah and all this. That. So he, somehow he knew or was told through either a vision or a dream or something. Um, so I'm not, we're not sure what it is, but I'm, I had the idea, well, let's do a vision. And as you're reading it, you're going to go through and have the normal realistic looking art. And then John's going to be like, I had this vision that came from beyond a book that came from beyond. And, it's going to be an insert poster of the vision and it comes out of the book from that spot and the reader pulls this vision out and it's from beyond. It's like from the beyond the book, you know, very meta. So, and you'll have, you know, I just have numbers on here. Page one, it's an eight page vision and it will unfold and you'll see four of the pages on the one side and you'll see of the vision by Jeff Von uh, Buskirk and then you'll flip it over and you'll see the uh, other four. So it's going to be this vision that comes out of the book itself. And it's going to be an insert. I've been talking to the printers um, if we and how if and how we can do this. So um, and then I'm plan planning on doing a nice hardcover embossed embroidered uh, version of uh, the blood of the Baptist as well. So something a little unusual you know not just a typical uh, read the story but you got this insert poster that comes out as part of the story so i can't hear you are you i i i do not know where my other guests are i know like i said Bill said he was still on the road so he might not make it but i don't know what happened to rj um I know I'm supposed to do another show at eight o'clock. Uh, okay. I don't know. I know I'm not going to I'm not going to make you stay out here all night and trying to hope for that they'll show up. So well, let's let's watch the uh, Florian's Nights trailer real quick. See if uh, what's his name shows up by then. If you want. So Florian's Nights is streaming. As I said, the trailer, the cinematography is magnificent. Um, it's. <laughs> It's an interesting, unusual take on uh, yeah. <laughs> look at the uh, firefighters. And then you'll see Mike Nevin in a trailer who I worked with, the uh, president of the Detroit Firefighters Association, who unfortunately passed away recently. He had a heart attack. Uh, so quite a loss. Yeah, I like the fact that, you know, instead of just talking about it, we can see stuff, you know? It's good. It's good setup you got. You know, oh, it's modern technology. Does that look familiar? That's it. All right. Roll this thing. This is Florian's Nights. Now oh, you got the volume. I think the volume is off. All right. Well, the volume's definitely not going. So. You say you can't hear it? No, I can't. That's Mike Nevin there, who I was talking about, Detroit firefighter. 
I didn't make sure you could hear it. I, could, I couldn't hear what you were saying there. It sounded like just something about the volume. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. The, I can't hear it on my end. Got to hear Mike, man. Got to hear Mike talking. Yeah, I still can't hear it. But you, you could see what I'm talking about with the cinematography. I don't get it. I don't get why it's not working. <laughs> yeah, join the crowd. It was working earlier on my on my uh, thing. I mean, I can hear it. You said you couldn't hear it. I'm like, I don't know why. No, I can't hear it on this end. No, so it's probably not going out for some reason. Let's try that a different way then. Let's try that a different way because I do not like to be defeated by stupid technology. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing, man. When you're doing something quality, it's just stubbornness. It's like, dang it, no, I'm gonna figure out how to get this to work. Like that movie I want to make. All right, I'm just stubborn. I'm gonna figure out how to get it. A good movie. Not, like that. Jeez, not one of my guests, but he's here to back me up. Y'all, y'all know him. You love him. Say hi to Doc. We love Doc. Oh man, he's coming in swinging. Always. What's going on, everybody? That's, that's how Brian. Doc. Gets, that's how he comes. In. We need a doctor. Is there a doctor in the house? The doctor is in, baby. All right. Okay. <laughs> he sounds like he needs a doctor. I've been, I've been sitting in this chair working since six o'clock this morning, and I am tired. Ooh. Brian, Man, do I know you? Where would I know you from, sir? Uh, I'm a Michigan guy. I do Motor City every year. Uh, do I've been doing a lot of different shows. Mm. Um, I don't know if we've met. I don't think so, but I've, I think I've seen you around the neighborhood. Well, see yeah, this. Yeah. Is that your is that your art in the back there? Uh, just one of them. The uh, that one's mine. Those are can, Alex Ross I can, paintings. I, I can tell ah, you, Doc, where you might have seen Brian because I just interviewed him at Hall of Heroes a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. I met. This is yeah. Anybody? This, anybody follow me on uh, social media? I'll follow you back. As long as you're it, not posting like uh, this is one of those people, Doc, that I didn't know of. This is one of the people that I met at a con and then promoted ever since. One of the, you know, not somebody that I knew of mm -hmm. ahead of time and then met him at the con. Right, you know, right. This is one of the people that I brought. Hey, you, Kirby. You got to come to the madness. We got to talk about you, you know. Um, and, you know, I've done that with a few of the local people that I found, you know, in the Michigan area since I started doing this. I love that. I love bringing you guys in, man, because... This dude, oh come on! I'm gonna play this trailer though. I got, I'm ready. I'm, Let's do it. I'm ready to play this trailer now. Let's do it. We'll Let's just act it out it ourselves. Right <laughs> Let's we'll see if I can get no. it right this time. Doc, you carry me out of a burning building. Doc would actually probably do that. <laughs> We're die trying. Yeah, there you go. That's what that's what my trailer says. Your big city public safety workers experience an awful lot. Fire to the car wreck. That's Mike Nevin shootings to the rescues. The repetition of that just beats in your mind like a drum. I've been doing this for forty years now, and the ones that were really horrible always stay. It's just not normal stuff. Mentally, physically, you guys are burning out. Have you ever in your career attended to the funeral of a firefighter who's committed suicide? Yes. He was suffering, and we knew the incident. And we and the fire service have gone to funerals over the years many, many times that we knew the person had taken their own lives 
and it wasn't spoken about. Your body is breaking down. I think those dark voices take over. Their hard drive's full. If you listen to what the firefighters are saying, get us help. For me, I know that I'm a different person once I've written. It's wind therapy. It's help. Bikers are bad. But stigma's still here. We need each other. We can survive with each other. They take us away from each other. You know, someone's not going to survive. When they see us coming up the street, some bad guys get out their way. And firefighters, nothing else. And the motorcycle is my medicine. What if achieving professional grade cinematic visuals and unreal? Oh, Fox left the commercial play. <laughs> oh man, I was going to order that. <laughs> so this is a <laughs> film. This is a film you made. No, I uh, worked. I, I uh, uh, the director reached out to me and uh, filmed me in my book, which is supposed to come out as its own short. But I'm not going to hold my breath on that. You know how things are in the film industry. But but the the movie's out right now and. Uh, um, I worked with those guys uh, on the graphic designs and mm -hmm. um, the official poster, me and J.A. DeFoy. And then I also connected them up with uh, Mike Nevin and the whole Detroit Fire Department. So some of the guys in my book, Inferno City Firehouse, are also in this uh, film. Inferno City so. Firehouse. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's book. my book. And, nice. Yeah, that's 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 a true stories from real Detroit firefighters. And then, uh, so they, they did, uh, pan and his crew did, they worked their asses off while they were in Detroit and Michigan area, but, but they did ride alongs with the same, same crew that I did and some other people too. But so it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. He's it's an important film. Yeah. He, in what he was saying really hit me, you know, uh, the worst of them stay with you for years. Oh yeah. And they do, uh, you know, I retired as a counselor, uh, but I went into oh, really? counseling because my first career was, I was a Navy corpsman. And then I went into emergency medicine after that. And, uh, I got tired of watching people die every Friday and Saturday night, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I said, yeah. you know, I still want to help, but there's gotta be another way. So I became a counselor. Okay. So you served. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. your service. Well, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, that trailer hit too close. Kirby felt it too. Yeah. That that scene in the movie, the best scene in the movie is the one where he's on the map and he's just he's yep. talking about the things that happen on this corner or the things that happen on this street or yep. <laughs> and it's Kirby it's brilliant. In the chat uh was a Marine who became a firefighter. Oh. Thank oh wow, two two for one there. Yeah. Uh, I mean uh, more respect, you know. I'm I'm on the side of not defunding the police, the mentality right. in our culture. Yeah. yeah. So that that is a sickness in our culture. This this ashamed of America's history, and I mean, of course, you know, slavery. These kinds of things are always bad, but slavery was all over the world. It wasn't just American thing. And, and we led the world in undoing it and that's stopping correct. it. And, and by yet the way, you got these people who are ashamed of the military, ashamed of America, and they don't respect the police. Or mm -hmm. so there are more people enslaved today than at any point yes. in history. Yeah. But zero exactly. in America. There's no legal slavery here. So stop hating. Yeah, not in Europe. Be... Not in Europe. Not in yep. America. <laughs> yep. We don't have to be perfect to be the best, and we are the best. No, and you take what is wrong and you you change it and you fix it, and that's one of the things we did. You know, of course, mm -hmm. we, we have sins. We all have sins. I have sins, but then we, you know, you also look at what we did right. So um, sure. this defund the police uh, sickness is, yeah, there's corruption in the police department. I deal my my thing with the firefighters is not propaganda about how great firefighters are. It mm -hmm. deals with greatness, but it also deals with <laughs> the problems and failures sure. too. It's it's a sure. realistic look. So. So Brian, this this is your art here. 
this is well this is my book so erwin arosa is my main artist um i'm i'm busy doing all of the you know writing and i used okay. to have co-writers but now i just do all that i letter it i i oversee the art i uh I, I'm a kind of writer who is an artist. So when I write most of the time, I know what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Right. So, but Erwin Arosa did this for the book and it's magnificent. It is. That's fantastic work. He, he's and I love the guy. panel amazing break right there too. That's dynamic. I like that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And that's not what they're, Oh wait, no, I was funny. That is what they're saying. You know, like you imagine when you're a kid and you see the fire truck and you're just going to, you're going to, chase it or something and then it's mm -hmm. like follow me on facebook twitter and dude let's follow them i, I just kind of <laughs> like it just it was the perfect page for that yeah so. <laughs> so. yeah that's the actual firehouse uh ladder uh ladder 13 engine 33 in detroit that uh i got to know these guys and did ride-alongs with and that's the actual fire that's awesome uh, house beautiful house gritty <laughs> Want to watch it, Doc? Want to watch? It? Sure, you know I do. Well, we saw this one already, but if you want to watch it again, I didn't get to see it. All right, just saying. This is original music for one of the songs. I have several songs for my books. Get me chills, man. <laughs> you know me. Oh, wow. That's what I'm going for. That's See, you know stuff. Me. I'm going through the con. I got Big Brad with me. We're looking for people to talk to, right? And I see the firefighter book down at the bottom of his display. He's got all this other stuff all over the place, right? This so that banner does work. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I saw it and I'm I grabbed Brad and I'm like, come over, come here, come here, come here, come here. That the first time I met Brian, that was how it went down, man. It was like I just grabbed Brad and dragged him over to dude's table. I was like, holy crap, it's a firefighter book. You know me, Doc. You know oh, me. That, and look, you know, I haven't read the the script, but that style of art is perfect storytelling for what you're doing something else right. is doing you're, you're gonna love doc look i'm sorry we got to do this all over again brian but doc is no, gonna, it's doc, okay doc, some people gonna, might have just showed up he's gonna love blood of the path baptist too but we got 80 people watching it ain't like we're running out of viewers 80 people <laughs> 80 people i gotta do a double salute there's so many people yeah, we got sixty some people watching on our. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna like Blood of the Baptist then, because uh, the firefighter book is true stories from real Detroit firefighters. I'm doing. I'm using Irwin and I are both working on the life and death of John the Baptist and that same style art, so a historical nice. fiction. And that nice. art, yes, you're right. It's it's you know you think of comic books and you think superheroes or you think of the typical style of comics, but this is dealing with real life stuff so that style is perfect for that yeah absolutely absolutely yeah here we go i'm getting there i'm getting there Doc. no there rush is. no rush yeah lou, lou is lou is hanging out in the chat she says defunding the police is no incentive to get good officers hey lou good to see you 
Oh my gosh, really? Who, who wants to be a police officer? You know, you you can't even do your job, and you know, you got to consider all this extra bullshit on top of what you're already dealing with. Mm-hmm. It's insane, man. I do put some people in. I do have tons of pictures from the cons, Kirby, but I usually do short videos and post them because they're more fun. But, you know, you start taking pictures before you know it, you're taking pictures of every cosplayer and every every person that's there signing and you forget about the reason you went, which is to hang out with people like Brian on Artist Alley. You see what I'm saying? That's why, I, you know, I've never gone to a con to see a movie star. I've never gone to a con to see cosplayers and I go to meet these guys. These guys. <laughs> the grind. But it's, All right, uh, let's see I some appreciate more of this. the love. Let's see some more of this. So this this takes place when John is imprisoned by Herod Antipas. And mm-hmm. there's a uh, mysterious uh there's some fictional characters that kind of go will guide us through John the time period and John's life and death. And uh, this character is intrigued at John. He doesn't know if John's a prophet. He's not convinced. He's kind of convinced. And he's he's going into the prison and inter- interviewing him because right. he's friends with one of the guards. And so we see we see some of the p- scenes are from him in prison. And then uh, that piece on the right is uh, a vision John has. Well, that's a that's the uh, um, sketch for it. It's not the final, but but uh, there's an eight page vision that John has. And he describes, and it actually is a eight-page fold-out poster that comes out of the book because nice. he says, you know, it's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you get it, right? He's like, yeah. I had this vision that came from beyond, and the the poster comes from beyond the book. It has yes. a different art style. This is one of the variant covers by J. Yep. A. Defoy. So I would I so, title uh, that piece: "Behold, the Lamb of God taketh away the sins of the yeah. world." That's awesome. Yeah, that is uh, that's. John being mocked when he was killed because they, uh, yeah. we, you know, I'm sure some of the people there at Herod drunk, you know, Herod's drunk birthday party were not, some of them weren't fans of him and I'm sure they mocked him just like they did Jesus. So um, sure. the idea here is he, John doesn't drink. And right. so the, the guy, guy gets indignant when he offers him a drink and D- John denies it and he cuts his head off and he goes, well, mm-hmm. you'll drink now prophet. Yeah. And so that's what that's what this piece is showing. Tragic, dramatic life. Yeah, yeah. And that's an oil painting, Doc. It's beautiful work. Beautiful. Doc is Jay a and Defoy, I really appreciate that. See, I want to see Doc's work, man, too, because uh, I'm I might have come across your stuff, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Doc. I, uh-huh. can, I can barely see that. Is that a turtle or is that a? It's a golem. Uh, he wants to see your work, Doc. The green. Oh, <laughs> all right. Bear with me one moment. Yeah, you on you're on the social medias. Yeah, I'm uh, Doc Blaylock eighty four oh four on Twitter. Uh, well, I'll my, have to I'll have to my, follow you. I, I don't see my trailer loaded in here, pops. There, there it is. <laughs> It is definitely noir. It's a little, with a little supernatural in it. Jake Bishop, Sweet. private investigator. I love noir. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. All time favorite movies are like Casablanca. Uh, Ooh, of course, uh, man. Humphrey yeah. Bogart. Hell yeah. Maltese Falcon, The Big Sleep. 
all those. Oh, you know. what about uh, Treasure of the Sahara Madre, though? Uh, oh, hell yes. More Western. Yeah, Plus, yeah. That's yeah. one of the greatest movies ever made, man. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. in, in my mind, Casablanca, of course, is the greatest of all time. And, and uh, Is it? Okay. I, it's great. I, I, can't, I can't watch that movie without getting inspired to do something. So I thought, yeah. you know what? I'll do a book that's actually a book that looks like a black and white movie from back in the day. So that's nice. that's the goal. That's the goal. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's where the foundation of great art. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's great. I just know I enjoy it. <laughs> well, I'm saying those movies, the uh, Casablanca oh, yeah. and all that. It's the foundation of all great art. Movies and so. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, uh, Kirby. I appreciate the votes of confidence. Doing a uh, at the same time as the uh, comic book. This is just a short floppy that fills in. So the the big book I'm working on is called Pariah, and the first one is Pariah Blood and Mud. The second one is Sanctum of Hate. The third one is Garden of Malice, and it's a revenge story about a young woman who uh, gets kind of the I spit on your grave treatment, and but they messed up because she's a witch. And so it's her revenge story. But in book two, book one is out now, book two, she ends up meeting this private detective who's tracking her down named Jake Bishop. And I thought, you know what? He needs a proper introduction. So what a perfect opportunity to do my noir book. So this All introduces right. Jake Bishop into her world. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, when I'm, I've, got, I've got my phone, I'm using my phone here which mm -hmm. I might use from now on because I usually use my computer and the camera on that computer sucks. Yeah. As, a, as long as my too. audio is not too bad. No, you sound great. So, you sound great. Yeah. All right, good. So um, it's a lot easier to set up. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, so anyway, on mine, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a novella to go along with the comic book. So they'll oh. both be releasing at the same time. And, uh, and that's been fun to write, man. That first person noir, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's fun to write. You got, you got, it's funny thing because you got the voice for noir, man. Like your voice, like I would hire you to do the voice for like a, a noir narrator, man. You're like, you got that gritty <laughs> noir sound. As it turns, as it turns, like <laughs> it, it turns out that I can afford me. So I'll be doing the audio book recording. <laughs> <laughs> you are perfect. You, it, you need to pay yourself well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's typically why I'm a one man show is I can't afford to pay anybody. So I've got a great, I've got you a see, great you publisher. You've seen the art I'm, I'm producing, man. It is, it's, I, and I don't like to try to talk people down to the price because I want their best art. Mm. So it is expensive. It yeah. is expensive, yeah. but. Yeah. That's worth it. Well, you know, my wife said, you know, when I told her I work for me because I'm free, and she just didn't miss a beat. She said, you get what you pay for, baby. Oh, God. Honey. <laughs> the Thank, thanks, Dagger. babe. <laughs> Dagger. She keeps you humble. She does. She so. does. You'll never get the big head hanging around my house. <laughs> no. Where are you at? You, you, where are you at? I'm in the deep south, just outside of Atlanta. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Good. Well, I got to get going, Pops. So I'm going to. Uh, well, Brian, it was uh, very Pops. nice to meet you. And I look forward to seeing yeah. your work. Um, no, I mean, I'm humbled and honored. It's uh, Pops and I have been trying to do the do a show on Sunday. And that's just not good for me. I got usually the kids and church and uh, it's just not the timing around one o'clock is the worst. Cause I'm not going to the early sh church. Uh, right, I'm, right. I'm a night owl, but uh, I'm glad I was able to do this, man. It's humbling and, and an honor to, that you wanted to get me on. And I look forward to like coming on and chit chatting again. Yeah, man. And, uh, we'd you love got, to see you, see you around yeah. the neighborhood. Anytime you got something you want to talk about or an announcement, um, Sure. Any anytime other. you have something live going on, you drop your links in the madness, Brian. Tell people, hey, you can get my stuff on Amazon. Drop your links over there. That's what that group is for. You know. Yeah. 
on Facebook. We'll do, man. I That's will what do. that group is for, for sure. So I got you. I put you on my uh, on my. Uh, I got a list going of people. You know, I want to grow a team. You know, I already have a fan base and emails and stuff, but you know, it's not that as big as I want yet. But it's it's there. And then um, growing a list of people like yourself who are doing stuff like this with independent creators and and uh, to really do a good Kickstarter launch and get the word out because, uh, uh, like I said, it's it's a it's hard work. It takes time and money, and I do not cut corners. I don't make my life easy. You know, I don't have to offer music with it, but I just want to. I'm stubborn, right. but right. I, it just adds to the, the validity of it. And so, like, and I, to do a music video is going to be tough. So I'm hoping to really go gangbusters on this uh, next Kickstarter. Well, best of luck to you, Brian. I look forward to to uh, following your progress, man. Seeing what you got going. Yeah, I'll look you up after the show here. So. Sure, sure, absolutely. All right, God, God bless you guys, and uh, I'll uh, uh, see you in the whatever in the chats. Yeah, man. Take care. Thanks. Thanks Take for care, coming folks. out, Brian. Yep, you have a great day, man. <laughs> oh man, I, I enjoyed that. It was brief, but I enjoyed it. What are you doing? Stop writing. Uh, What's wrong with you? <laughs> he finally responded to me. It's like Lou says, "Pops' I superpower is promoting." He said, "I didn't get a link." I'm like, "Scroll up, man! It's right there. I'm looking mm. at." <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I'll share something. I'll share something with you here. Let's see. Where is it? Hold on. I got something to show Lou. Hold on. All I'll right. I got I got to show Lou something real quick. Because what she said is very very true. What she said is very true, Doc. Right there. Mm -hmm. She said my yeah. superpower is is promoting. Yes. Yes. See that? Yeah. Hey, of course, RJ. I clicked the YouTube link. I clicked the YouTube link, and I'm like watching you guys. I'm like, why aren't you bringing me into the studio? I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh right below that. Yes, sir. I did send it to you. What do you think of that, RJ? What do you think of that? Super Pops. <laughs> Love that. Who did that? <laughs> JT Malloy. He did his black cat too. Very cool. So so many so many artists out there. I can't keep track of them all. J.T. Malloy does a book called uh, oh, some, Man, I'm Sapphire Spectre. I would have killed myself if I had forgotten that because I've known that dude for five years or so, you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, you screw up like that. I hate it. Yeah. Um, what had happened is a friend of mine wanted to order a book and the people who were selling it did not they didn't ship to Canada. And my friend was like, man, I want to get that book. I want to get, I was like, just, uh, I said, just ship it to my house and I'll send it to you, you know? So she did. She had them shipped to my house and I just put her address on it, shipped it off to pick it, you know? And a couple months later, man, that thing came in the mail. It just blew me away, man. I was like, Shh. There's, there's no reason not to ship to Canada or Australia or Timbuktu. I mean, I, I hear creators all the time say, oh, it's too expensive to ship international. I'm like, give the customer the decision to decide that. They're the ones paying the shipping. Dude, anytime, Brian. It was good to see you, man. Good to see you again, for sure. Uh, you got to go out. If, were you watching the first part of the show then, RJ? You saw them? No. No, no, that's just always been my opinion. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the Brian, when he was out here talking about his stuff. No, when I was, I didn't get off work till just about a half hour ago. And then I had to talk with somebody about shipping their books. Uh, and, then, and then I'm getting these messages like, you know, Pop says you're supposed to be on there. I'm like, where? What? When? Who? <laughs> what? Hey, Mr. Cotta. You, you you remember the other night when me and you and Bill were on and we were talking, so you guys both need to come out on Monday Madness. You guys are both like, yeah, all right, we'll be there. And then, it's like, then I'm sitting here and I'm like, if if I don't bring this out in a pen, 
it didn't happen. Okay, <laughs> it, this it has to go in the Bible. Uh, well, it was you but, telling me you needed to get on my show. I know. You remember I know. that? You remember. <laughs> I do remember that. I just didn't remember actually putting a putting you know timestamp to it all. Shit, I serve people up when they ask to get on the show. I give them a date. I lock them in quick because otherwise, they're you know somebody else is going to get it. You know. Uh, but Bill sent me a message. He's still on the road. He hasn't gotten home yet, so he's going to be late. I, I'm glad that Brian hung out because Brian has a lot of different stuff, and it's all good. I didn't know much about the movie, so we got to watch the movie trailer for Florian Nights. Nice. That was pretty awesome. Dude's lit up over there, man. Way lit up. <laughs> <laughs> That's because of RJ right there, too. Who little bad guys? Yes. And I, I, I didn't uh I didn't wear my gray shirt, so you know deal with the black one. Which oh. gray. I have the gray covered. All right, I am gonna go eat. What were you trying to show me a minute ago? I was just showing this afternoon's I was, work. I was gonna go back to that. See, I wasn't done with you. Uh, okay. Show me real quick. Get that back up there. Uh, RJ, yeah. Doc's working on with digital. He's like inking this. He's inking his pencils and stuff. Like, is, is, is that harder? <laughs> I, want, yeah, I mean, you know. No, no, it takes a little getting used to, but it's not harder. I would think just the pressure of the pen against the screen and you're used to, you know, graphite on paper. There's <coughs> it, uh, it makes certain things easier and some things harder. Looks like Doc's work, though, don't it? Yes, it does. It's still me. It's easier than drawing with a mouse in paint. You got that right. right. (laughs) We've all tried that. Dude, yeah. And uh, that that ain't no fun. Hey, I make all my graphics in 3D paint. You guys leave me alone. (laughs) All All right. I'm going to go eat. Pops, always a pleasure to see (laughs) See you, RJ. Good to see you, sir. You're looking good, man. Who, who do you got Wednesday, Doc? Who do you got? Anybody? I, I don't even remember. I've got somebody. I'll have to find my list. Yeah, let me know so I can set up a show. Yo. Will do. All right. Peace out, everybody. Later, bro. A gaping hole in the industry. I know. I know. I was I was shocked, you know, to hear that to, to learn that that existed. I want you to know right now on the Critical Blast Twitter page, there's 68 people watching this show. Yes, 68. People. You, you get a lot of viewers through Twitter. Uh, I have. I get I have... a lot of viewers through your Twitter. Bill, 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 you come out whenever you get home, bro. We'll be out here. Hey. I can't wait to work with Bill. When he when when he went and announced publicly what we've been talking about in private, I'm like. Well, okay, then. I guess I can tell people. <laughs> so, go ahead and tell people. Since he's late. <laughs> well, we, we are going to be uh, we're going to be doing some publishing with Bill Mouse. Uh, we're doing going to be doing some uh, some, some Nira X graphic novels. Uh, you know, a source book, uh, an artist edition, uh, that kind of stuff. Would love to uh, love to find out that we can do an omnibus, but you know we're going to do something. We're going to do some things, and uh, he's just getting home. He'll be out here to he'll be out here hang out with us and just that's awesome. In the driveway, I can see him now doing the Homer Simpson, closing the door, running into the garage door. Ah, I got something to tell you though. You you see the condition of this here? uh, It's been washed quite a bit, hasn't it? You, you, well, we promote you, bro. We, you know, it's been washed oh, a bit, but um, you, you, you it's can't tell me you need like, replacement shirt pops. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to get me a new shirt for Christmas. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do something, especially you know, since we're uh, getting ready to replace the logo. So sure, yeah, we'll. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Upgrade, upgrading the logo. Dude, um, I always try to start at the beginning. We met almost four years ago, you know, um, I loved what you were doing, which was very little of what you're doing at the time. Okay. All I was doing was running a YouTube show and you had somebody's comic to promote. wasn't even yours. 
They ain't never been. I ain't a kind of guy. You know that. I don't create them anyway. Even the well, one I didn't that, know then. It was like, you know, you come out with this comic and I'm I'm going through the whole thing like, dude, this is your comic. This is great. And you're like, no, this isn't my comic. I'm, I'm promoting this for somebody else. I'm like, well, okay, cool. Well, they did. Um, I, look at it, I look back. What, you, you, I think you were like fulfilling like three people's campaigns then. I, no, think. I was fulfilling nobody then. I hadn't come up with the idea yet. No. What, what was the first couple? Was it the rabbis and, and Joe's? R- Rabbi, company men company man uh what what about uh george's uh red eyes no nope not joe's yet I hadn't done the joe king one that had been it just seemed like it, there was only a couple you know it was like man you i love this idea we're gonna make i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna put you in a warehouse <laughs> <laughs> i said i'm gonna keep talking about what you do until you're doing it out of a warehouse now just because you're doing it out of a warehouse does not mean i'm now going to stop telling people about what you do just you know it, it i hope not it wasn't a ceiling <laughs> i'm thinking about changing the name from critical blast to gaping hole gaping hole productions oh, what? that way that way when people say there's a gaping hole in the industry i can say yes there is and it's us yeah look um I'm I'm 100% behind whatever you do. I'm, I'm 100% behind whatever you do. I got you, Lou. I'm giving it to him right now. Brian, you now have a wrench on the network, and you can drop links to anything you're doing whenever you want. Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then somebody in the background, somebody backstage, and this guy. This freaking <laughs> I hey, recognize that <laughs> art. What what's up, guys? <laughs> I, I've been I've been multitasking today a little bit more than uh, than I'm used to. So yeah, thanks He's thanks like, for I'm, letting thanks for letting me be late. <laughs> oh, dude, look, this that's the thing I love about this show is like I, like I didn't know if either of you were gonna be here. I was like, Doc, come in here, talk about your stuff. Till you know what I mean? It's like we always got somebody that we can pull in. If I'd have known he was going to be late, I'd have just had Brian come out at five instead of four. <laughs> RJ will get some reps in. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> RJ, how many? How much have you lost in the last year? Uh, I am at, I was at two, I, I don't know the math anymore. I was at 260 and change, and I'm at 207 yesterday. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. This shirt I got on right now, this is a large I was wearing a 2XL. Nice. See, that's what I'm talking about. Well, you're you're in, you're kind of inspiring me to get off my ass, dude. You know what I, I found out? You always hear that it's diet and exercise, diet and exercise, and it and they're right, but not immediately. <laughs> and they're <both>. right. <laughs> but but yeah, but you think it's like you got to start off with that, and it's like no, start off with diet first because otherwise the exercise will just kill you. Uh, and you won't want to do right, it. right. But when you yeah, lose yeah, some weight, walk around yeah. the block and not die, you're like, oh, okay, it's easier to exercise now that I'm not carrying so much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's about the fuel you're sticking in the machine. That's that's for sure. I, yeah. I think I'm ninety percent Lucky Charms. That's, well, see, so that's that could be a problem. So says my doctor. <laughs> These these are just twelve pounders. I do a hundred reps. Uh huh. Uh, that's 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 my record. See, do it. Do a comic book workout video. <laughs> I do 50, I do fifty as a warm up, and then I do seventy five, and then I try to end the day with a hundred. Uh, I have to have the twenty pounder right here by the chair because I'm in the chair too much. But then yeah, well, I that's do, you know I do go out and walk you know in the neighborhood sometimes because it is. This was my first day. one. I know. I remember. <laughs> See the baby. I guess I gotta start. I gotta start doing some uh, some chair yoga. It's like that's what's been. That's what's been. I, I think uh, Siri's been listening to basically every word I say, which is bad. But uh, well, a lot not of just ads, Siri, but she passes it on to Twitter. Yeah, a lot of ads for chair yoga popping up. In Siri, my feed. tell everybody to back Nira X. That's right. That's right. I need to. Uh, I need to be able to change my diet and buy more expensive good food. So. <laughs> If everybody could please support Nira X. 
no, it, it is kind of a series expensive. you talk about near edge to everyone. And I've got the uh, let me see. Everybody. Let me pull up my it's screen here, expensive. I think. There we go. <laughs> It's more expensive to buy a loaf of keto bread than it is to buy two boxes of Twinkies. Oh, for sure. Are you kidding me? And that's that's part of the problem. And we're kind of closing in on twelve. We're kind of closing in on twelve thousand now. So hopefully, uh, if we could see who's going to take us over twelve k, I mean, that would be that would be amazing. Who's going to be that hero? Who's who's going to come in with that stick? I need a hero. <laughs> so, you got near the edge. You got. Out, down to the counting hours, right? Hours left. Um, RJ. RJ. <laughs> There's literally 28 hours left to go on the campaign. Yeah, yeah. RJ just did something for one of our fellow creators in the in the in the community, Timothy uh -huh. Timothy Olson. What did, what did you do with Timothy's book, Melvin? Yeah, tell everybody a little bit about that real quick. That book yeah, right yeah. there? That little book. book right here? Yeah. yeah. That's it. The, the, the one with the with the Critical Blast publishing imprint on it? That's the one. I, all, we, all, we, all we did was print a book. You know, it's, <laughs> it was a, I found out that there was a gaping hole in the industry, uh, you know, with uh, printing and publishing and distribution and creative services. So, so what we did was... Uh, Timothy, you know, sent us his print files, and then he said, oh, but I need to change art. So uh, we have a creative art team that went in and changed art and re-lettered, and, um, and then we printed it, and uh, we got it into distribution uh, with Amazon and Barnes & Noble and a little outfit called Walmart uh, and this place called Powell's. Um, all, all those all, all those little rinky-dink places are, you know, picking up the ISBN <laughs> number. Well, it's good to start. It's good to start with the smaller places. Yeah, you want to start small. You don't want you know, We don't want to, you know, go to you know, deliver it ourselves yet. Um, so, what you're saying is, is you're handling business. Yeah, we, you know, we're we're we're, we're making comics. We're, you're handling business. This is what yeah. I'm talking about, people. Now, who well, what, 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 knowledge that dropped on you? Who was it that said? Um, Somebody needs to do this. Who's who is it? I, 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 it pop, pops. What 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 it is? What it is is <laughs> what it is. Uh, what is it? What it is? <laughs> it, it is what it is, and what it is is that we had to publish, and we had to distribute, and we had to uh, also, you know, um, what, what is it that we do? Uh, we had to. <laughs> what is it that we do? <laughs> well, you had to fulfill, but you didn't know anything about fulfilling. Dude, there's so many hats that I've had to learn how to wear since uh, <laughs> since this whole new era of comics started. That RJ it's it's, knows, a, it's amazing. RJ knows more about fulfillment probably than anybody in this industry. Yeah. And we, we make we make comics in in in, in littler sizes. I mean, you, you you saw Melvin. Let me bring Melvin back up here. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh. The, 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 this is Melvin, standard size. You know. This is a uh, grayscale, which is a uh, miniature size, uh, and uh, this, this just so it doesn't get lost. This is uh, oh wait, that's Joe King miniature size. Well, what what I want to see is, is Joe King pocketbook size. So, see, that's a that's a good key right there is to be able to put them out in different sizes, different budgets. Yes, and and here's you know, the thing: you, you, when you put them out in different reasons. sizes. They, they sell in every size. When we put them exactly. out in every size, they sell in every mm -hmm. size. Because that's the way I buy stuff myself. It's, uh, you know, I buy something for the shelf. I buy something for, you know, for my comic book box. You know, not everything that I that I buy is, uh, I want to have one one to keep in a comic book box in great condition. And I want to keep one that I can actually, uh, <laughs> like, basically, like, that's the one that gets the wear and tear of, of me reading it over and over again or whatever. Yeah. You get the one you love and the one you really love. You really don't <laughs> the one you really love. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, again, RJ, it's like I was being facetious, obviously, when I said you don't know nothing about fulfillment. Uh, <laughs> how many oh, of course. How many, yeah, does. How, how many campaigns have you fulfilled for, RJ, today? 
Are you keeping track? No. In the forty. No. <laughs> as, as I get a new, as I get a new uh, idol, you know, we we add it to the growing list of titles that go by the parade of titles mm-hmm. in our ad. But that doesn't count the fact that some of those have been fulfilled two, three, four times. Uh, you know, with issue numbers. Red eyes were going on number five, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Because we just did one through three, and then we did the hardcover. Um, I mean, and, and and then okay, so so like my mail carrier came by this morning. Right. She right. looked at the house. She said, "I'm going to come back when the truck's empty." <laughs> uh, she came back when the truck was empty, and she had to put away 30, 14 by twelve by eight boxes of this bad boy. Giles, Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Yeah. Look how big this sucker is. This is a big book. This does not fit in a Gemini mailer, folks. No, no, no it does not. <laughs> it requires special handling. All the way out. Have you tried expanding the Gemini all the way out? Yes. Wow. This does not fit in a Gemini. You can't even make you creases make in the Gemini mailer. RJ, just make your own template, dude. Out of pieces of out of cardboard, just make your own template. Covered. This is this is getting bubble wrapped and then wrapped in paper and then it goes in a box because guess what? Then we put a Gemini on top of it with the other comics. Then we put a box on top of that with the statue. Then we right. pack all the paper around it. We seal it up <laughs> and that's why it's a fourteen by twelve by eight box. Well, you know we're we're in the middle of we're in the middle of uh, basically coming up with our our own this this niche this uh, thing that's opened up for for us you know independent guys. Is because a larger ocean is kind of opened up for us because of how the industry is right now, and without people actually having the infrastructure for us to navigate it, like you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So, yeah, need we need we need RJ. <laughs> I definitely did not foresee what it was, all the different directions it was going to go, but I knew he was going yeah. to be the premier fulfillment center out here. I knew that. Because his his plan, the cost to use his plan, all that was just ridiculous. It's a no brainer not to call RJ and say, "Hey, uh, will you fulfill for me?" Because if you're a creator, Bill, right? When you're done with your uh, campaign, you've done your promoting, the, the work's all done, it's off to the printer. Um, do you want to have to worry about fulfillment, or do you want to get on with the next book? See, you sound like the ad. I'm telling you. <laughs> because that's look we want the books exactly quicker. in order for us to get the books quicker you guys have to delegate when and where you can delegate to speed up the process exactly exactly and, and that we want to we want to we want to get back to creating we i want to get back to as yes. soon as we're done with one book i don't want to spend yeah i want to spend all you know a lot of time uh, loading up a truck i want to get drawing the next one I mean, the customers help shape what we do. Uh, oh, the, they the, do. Yeah, when that's, I had the that's idea, bottom line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I had the idea, it was like, oh, I see a niche, a niche, a niche. A niche. <laughs> I see yeah. something nobody's doing. Um, yeah. And it was the company men. It was like, oh, you're in Australia and it costs you like $40 to ship a book. Uh, how much to ship a whole box of books? A lot less than, you know, than shipping them one at a time. So why don't you just ship me the whole box and I'll do you a favor. And I'll right. ship them out at domestic rates here. And, uh, you know, you can pay me like a certain amount per book. And it would come to uh, like it came to about eight dollars per book. Uh, and See, suddenly yeah. you know, people weren't saying, I'm not paying that for, you know, more, more shipping than the book. They're like, oh, I'm paying less shipping than the book. I'll buy a lot more books. Uh, we ship <laughs> a lot more books. And I'm like, yeah, that's not bad. Every once in a while, somebody's going to be out of the country and they want to make comics. They can get a hold of me. Second guy calls me up, says, I want you to do that for me. I'm like, yeah, cool. OK, where are you coming from? Virginia. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not saving you any money uh, in fact I'm costing you more money to do it that way he's like you don't understand I don't want to do it and I don't have the time and time is money like I was just yeah. saying that's, that's like, the thing yeah getting back to work is more important having somebody they know they can trust to fulfill their campaigns means they can go back to work exactly yes because well, because both both of these tasks yeah both of these tasks are twelve hour days unto themselves you know yeah. so we got to have got to have a little bit of a network a little bit of a structure a little bit of, and it's got to make financial sense to be able to to do it so that's the other place where RJ comes in 
it makes financial sense for creator to go to him for fulfillment. <laughs> you know, I just I, I I didn't get greedy. I'm like, what would what's a good reasonable rate per book to charge for fulfillment? And I build it into the price. So. Mm -hmm. Put it into the shipping cost. There you go, guys. Just like that. Didn't come out of your pocket at all. What's it, what's it cost to fulfill with you? Nothing. Nothing. If you do it right, it costs you nothing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you because you, you build your shipping uh, cost around that. And, you know, pe people say, well, you're okay, so you're passing it on to the customer. Like, what aren't you passing on to the customer? Uh, I mean, are you paying them to read your book? No. If the customer's paying for the full price of that book plus some so that you can make your next book. So, of course, it's getting passed on to the customer. I believe that's how uh, that's how everything you buy works. <laughs> well, capitalism, yeah. <laughs> it, it also, like you said, it it speeds up the process, guys. Bill ain't gonna spend the next two weeks fulfilling. Now I know Thomas does it for you, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom is a one man. Tom is a one man operation over there. He's he's. It's amazing how much he's actually taking Bill care of on his stuff, end. Though. He's going to get a box of stuff to sign. He's going to have to sign all this. <laughs> I know how this works. I'm in the know. He's like, you want me to send some stuff over to Bill to sign? I'm like, no, that's a bill, man. <laughs> <laughs> lose like, lose the final plenty, countdown first. I like that. Plenty of cool stuff here that Bill drew or whatever that's already got a signature on it. I'm good. I, yeah, Bill. Bill, we, we talked about it. I've got to I've got to find a way to uh, get, get past everything I'm doing right now, so I can commission you to draw that Batgirl picture. Oh yeah, that'd be dope. And then RJ, there's this other thing. What am I doing now? What now? <laughs> what? What about your own books? My, my own. Oh. 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 Yeah, um, well, it's 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 still publishing. It's you know it's like uh, okay, so so like you know we we're still publishing other creators with things like the monsters next door. Uh, we're still publishing old. We didn't have to pay these guys. That was the best part. Um, you know, the, the brothers Grimm for this you know illustrated. Oh, of course I say illustrated, and I can't find a picture. Uh, there's only <laughs> three hundred and something pictures in this thing. Five hundred forty pages. Uh, all of it on Amazon. All of it on Walmart. Now, this is this is my favorite book of all. They, uh, it's still the Brothers Grimm. Nobody buys this on Amazon because it's seventy five dollars. But they see it at a convention and they're like, "Pretty." And you know, this, this is a convention. <laughs> wow, what are the odds I open it up to the same picture in two different books? <laughs> open to the same picture in two different books. That was awesome. I'm gonna start taking RJ to Vegas. That could only happen on the madness, yo. <laughs> All these different. Uh, oh, where's my favorite picture? At? There's, there's, there's one I always go to. Um, of course, he won't be able to find it now. This one he always goes to. Oh no, I know, I know, the, I know the story. It's the story of the four clever brothers. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, I don't know where it's at. It's in here. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. There it is. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There it is. There it is. It's uh. Everybody remember it's on page 357 if I ever ask again. <laughs> it's, it's we, we got the four clever brothers and, and all of them learn their trades. And of course, you know, they all come together to help rescue a princess who's captured by a dragon. And all of their trades come to bear. And then we had this, you know, spread in here where the dragon's fighting the boat that they're in. And we got the text going all around it. And it's a two-page spread. And it's just, we got stuff like this throughout the book. This is just the best example I go to. Um, and then, of course, and then of course, oh, by the way. I hear Pops has a new uh, host on his uh, network. We have a new sponsor. Yes, we do. For new the, sponsor. Uh, for, for the month of, of now, mm -hmm. you, you see that Mr. Big over there on the right? That Mr. Big on the on the low. Yeah, I see, yes, I see. You see Mr. Big? We have added Mr. Big to all our stuff. Tomorrow, tomorrow, RJ, we will be debuting the Bugsy Trigger. Prime. Prime time crime with the uh, Bugsy campaign. Now, you still haven't shown them up there. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes. See, 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 this, 
I, we did this about four years ago. This was just an anthology of uh, stories because I always loved those, you know, stories like D the Devil and Daniel Webster and uh, Faust and all those things where like people run it. He's a great character, great literary character. The Devil is, uh, and we did twenty stories. I'm like, I still didn't get my story in it. Dang it! Because that was the whole point of me doing it was to get my story in there. RJ edited, so I'm like, RJ edited himself out of the book. He's like, mine ain't good well, enough. I edited it so much I didn't have time to finish my story. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll have to have an answer to that. We'll do a second volume with The Devil You Know Better. This time by sure, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get in here because, you know, it's, a, it's an updated book. We, with the, the Devil You Know, The Devil You Know Better. You know what I didn't do? I didn't get in the book. Uh, <laughs> Bro. So, so, so we finished off the series with The Devil You Know Best. And to get into the book, I had to expand the number of stories from 20 to 25. Uh, I am, you know, I, I, I finally let myself into the book uh, this time around. So, so there it there it is on the very last story uh, is mm -hmm. Revelation, which, you know, should always be the last book of any uh, collection, I think. <laughs> That'll be the very last Nero book that I ever draw. Will be called what does that mean to the author at Dante's? <laughs> What's that? What does that mean to the author at Dante's? Well, there was the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John the Baptist at Patmos. Okay. Okay. So this was the revelation of Lucifer to the author at Dante's, uh, which is, is a restaurant. It's an Italian it's restaurant. A, that's what I thought. That's, uh, that's what I was about to say. It's just like, please order the... Uh... I, I just want you to know, when you're talking madness, this is Dante. Oh, okay. Dante is, is a RPG character in the Slaughterville game we play on Fridays. His name is Dante Sinferno. Sin <sighs> Dante Sinferno. Yes, I, like I dig it. <laughs> now, this was uh, this, this was just Dante's Italian restaurant, and uh, you know the, the the devil's there waiting, and uh, he he recommends the veal. Uh, there's a veal parmesan. Uh, they it, it's done with an Alfredo sauce where it's made from the milk of the of the of the calf's mother, so it pairs perfectly. Uh, <laughs> l l little known. Uh, transgression there. People don't don't get it. Uh, there's like a, a verse in the Bible that says, "Don't serve uh, you know the, the the calf with the milk of the mother. It's, it's cruel. Don't do that." Like, yeah, he's doing that. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a sin. There, there's a there's a verse in the Bible that literally says, "Don't be a dick. Don't do that." <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> early, early it is. Like you know, <laughs> it's like, well, be, be, just be nice to each other. What? Where's a tree? We gotta nail this guy up. How dare he say, be nice to each other. This is unbelievable. RJ, there are 88 people watching, and like 75 of them are on your, your Twitter well, channel. Take them back to where it all began. Take them back to where it all began. This is, okay. uh, God, th this is Gods and Services. Uh, this was the only, my first anthology that we, we published under the, um, the, old, the old Critical Blast logo there. Um, and Can this, uh, let me see some names. Who's, whose names are on there? Who, who do we got? Anybody we know? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, there's people on there you know, okay, yeah, all right, good. Well, since, uh, since we got a we got a nice group of people watching, and let me let me remind people a little bit about, about this piece right here. It's a contest piece, oh. it's actually one of the covers <laughs> for the campaign. It's on uh, it's, it's it's like the, the yeah, one variant yeah. cover. <laughs> that i did and uh we're actually I'm, I'm twisting tom's arm there was a there was a backer number that he wanted to reach and i'm like there's 27 hours left to go and i'm i'm very i've been very happy with the campaign so far so i'm gonna twist his arm and i'm gonna make sure that he still gives this away at the end of the campaign um this is uh the original 11 by 17 inked art for that particular cover uh and you'll see you'll 224 backers, right? Yeah, yeah, 224 backers. Come on, come on, 300. Let's another, go. Uh, another uh, 400 bucks or so. I think we can, uh, we can kind of break the, the twelve thousand dollar goal. Um, but yeah, it's like uh, at the end of the campaign, uh, Tom's going to put everybody's backer number into a randomizer and pick out a winner. Uh, and it doesn't doesn't have to necessarily be. A physical backer we're also going to make every, everybody who's a backer it doesn't matter if it's just the digital level or if it's a physical level whatever they everybody's number is going to get tossed into the uh the old weed eater <laughs> and chopped up 
and uh, Tom's going to pick out a winner. So I just want everybody to to know that since we got just a few hours left. And, 27 uh, hours to go, 224 yeah. backers, $11,588. You know me, though. I care more about the backer count than money. Oh, the backer count is important, man. I, 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 want, to, I want people to read the book. I want people to be, yeah. be a part of what more we're doing. Hands. Get it in more hands. That, to me, is more important than – I mean, it's great. No matter how much money you make, mm-hmm. but to me, that backer count number is always going to be more important because – more people that read it, the more people are going to tell somebody else about it. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So you know, like you know, usually, usually covers are like a like a two or three hundred dollar thing. So I mean, for for it's not a bad uh, bad little raffle kind of uh, contest kind of idea. Um, yeah. if, if if all you do is get a, a six dollar or whatever, you know, however much he's got the uh, the PDF for, and it's yeah. still put, and you get to check out the books. So it's like you know, you get to save it and uh, keep it with all your digital media. Um, and you get to try something new and have a chance at winning some artwork and stuff. So, yeah, I hope everybody uh, checks it out before the uh, the end of the campaign rolls up and we uh, we we, yeah, we, I, we shut the doors and roll up shop. <laughs> and I just read that bird snatching again. I just want to know. He's like, huh? Bird scratching? What? Who bird went? Snatching. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? That character, she's a bird. She got snatched. She's gone. Where'd she go? (laughs) Come on. If you didn't read book one, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you did, you do. What's I thought you kept on. I, I thought you had some, like I thought you had a bird in your window and it was scratching oh. at the roof or something. You were like commenting if I could hear it on the microphone. I'm over here listening intently for a bird. Your character, <laughs> your character in book one. What's her name? The bird. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. yeah. She got snatched. It was a bird snatching. I, I know a total bird snatcher. And plus, I was really, I was really in the mood uh, to draw like uh, pirates and zombies. This time out, which is which is the entire reason that the story revolves around the Darkon's triangle, it's just to give me an excuse to draw zombies and pirates. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, you guys, because we're here and you're both here now. Um, I want to go through this campaign, of course, because I don't know if I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Or not. I don't know what's up. <laughs> I don't know what happens from hour to hour. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what your plans are for the last, you know, like nine or nine thirty tomorrow night when it ends. Well, it ends in 27, 27 hours. I mean, we could, we could, we could time something so we can hang out and uh, see how it closes out. We could do something like that. Yeah, I didn't watch know the ball drop. I, yeah, watch the ball drop. Out. You had something going on somewhere or not? If you don't, you know. No, I got no, it. no. I'm I'm drawing I'm drawing two books at the same time over here. So I'll be I'll be at my table unless I'm uh, multitasking on the road like I was today. So yeah, yeah. If you, if you yeah, we like yeah, let's uh, let's uh, time it out and see what time we'd have to get together and yeah, let's do something. We'll hang out for a few minutes while the ball drops. That'll be we awesome. Out, we what we'll do is was we'll, at nine o'clock. I'll set it up for nine o'clock. But if it turns out that it's an hour later, we can always start an hour later. Doesn't matter, you know, because I don't know exactly what time it's going to end. It says twenty-seven hours to me. That's nine thirty, but it could be ten thirty. I think it. I think it runs on Eastern Standard Time, but we'll. I'll. I'll, I'll give it a double check. I'll give it a double Definitely check. Locking you in for the nine o'clock hour. Oh no no! It says. Uh, no, it says right there. It. Uh, it ends at ten sixteen, Eastern okay. Eastern Daylight Time. Yeah. So so ten sixteen is when. The ball drops, as it were. So let's start at 9.30 tomorrow night. What do you think? So 9.30 tomorrow night. Let's make it a thing. All right. Locking it in. You're in. <laughs> awesome. You're in. See, that's how we do this, people. That'll be fun. 9.30. I'm going to write it down right now, too. Uh, you better make sure Tom didn't have something already lined up, too. <laughs> he better be next to his computer monitoring like a, like a madman. Refresh, 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 refresh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, refresh. No, no, no. I mean, that's what Tom will be doing. Refresh, that's refresh, Tom, refresh. That's what Tom will be. Yeah, Tom is definitely going to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you can get any of RJ's books at criticalblast.com. Um, I shared something today, too. Critical Blast slash publishing. Publishing. You can go yes. 
get your books published and put all over in the big places. We are we are reading for our next anthology through the end of this month, um, which is uh, the fables next door. It's going to be kind of like the monsters next door, but instead of monsters, it's going to be characters from uh, myth and fables. They're living in modern day. They their stories have happened. They're, it, we're not looking for people to retell old stories with cell phones involved. We're looking for the actual characters to be living today, but having done what they did. What are they doing now? So. I, so for people who've submitted those kinds of stories, sorry, you, you missed the theme. Um, I'll tell you who didn't miss the theme uh, was Alan Dean Foster and, 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 and Bill Willingham. Neither of those two missed the theme, and they are in the book. Uh, so, Did you say Alan Dean Foster? Yeah, he, he did something in the 70s, uh, some space thing. Um, yeah, well, he did the Spirit of the Mind, or Spirit of the Mind, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, or something like that. Well, yeah. Plus, you know, he did this, you know, he did a new hope because. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. What? There's something else that I have here that he did. We, 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 lo- we lost Pops. 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 Pops is gone. <laughs> it's going to bug me. I could have sworn I put it right here, like in my reading pile. Oh, I did. It's actually in my reading file. See, I have this cardboard thing that I use when I read so I don't get my fingers all over the covers of the books. You know what I mean? I, got I have you. this book in here. I don't know if you know about this, RJ. Have you ever seen this? Let me just show you a little something. something what we got right here. Ooh, look at that. He's done a comic book. I remember yeah. Andromeda. He, he talked about that when we uh, interviewed him. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. And some, yeah, you've got one. Yes. As soon as I found out he did a comic book, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like it's the day I found out, I was like, really? Oh, I got to go find one of those. And I got a really good deal on it. You know, what can I say? I mean, Foster. I mean, but yeah, I like Splinter of the Mind's Eye. That was, that was, uh, that was good reading. <clears throat> Would have, made a, would have made a great movie. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know why it was. It felt so much better than some of the other stuff. But it did. It was like neither one of them were like super powered or anything stupid. You know, I mean, uh, Luke was still farm boy Luke. Leo, Leia was young and, 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 and very Karen-ish. Well, it, it came out before uh, the second movie did. So, you know, yeah. we hadn't. He hadn't had his force training and everything else yet. Yeah. Um, it was much fun. I liked it. It, it's too bad that there wasn't like, you know, a whole bunch of, um, you know, Star Wars literature to draw off of uh, when, when they came around to making the movies. Because, you know, because they, because they, 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 they said, you know, hey, you know, we had to make stuff up because there wasn't, you know, a whole, there wasn't a whole bunch of literature to pull from. Um, yeah. And then when there was a whole bunch of literature to pull from, they screwed it all up. <laughs> oh no! They just ignored it. They didn't pull oh, it from well, the literature at all. Well, filmmaking <laughs> is different now. It's uh, well, look at them now. Now they're going. Oh wait a minute! That Thrawn dude. Everybody likes him, and they're pulling him in, but without Mara Jade because they screwed that up. Mara Jade can't be Luke's wife. Mara Jade. Blah, 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 blah. They just like ruined one of the most popular, strong female characters in Star Wars, Mara Jade, and they just shit it out the window like it didn't exist. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Look, look, they screwed up by not having the Jedi twins. Yeah, no twins, no, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah they just messed mm. it up. They really did. They, they did it. And, and not only that, but um, um, <laughs> uh, Chewbacca's dead. Long live Han. Chewbacca died in the EU. Han was still alive. And it was a whole storyline about how traumatic it was for him to lose Chewbacca to not have his right hand there by his side and it was something that they delved into in in, in Han's psyche and, and he withdrew from everybody and she, it was cool see you don't understand that when you get the helm a billion dollar franchise that everybody truly loves and actually pays yeah, attention to and they actually know all the characters what you want to do is ignore all of the character development that's ever been put into a character 
<laughs> yes. And just make up some new stuff and hope it lands for you. <laughs> but but it it but but there's also the other way, Bill. And and we've seen this too. Where, where where you pick up you get to write a character and rather than take the character development that you've got and tell a new story, you're like, they really liked that story. Let me just tell that one again. Well, see, th that's the thing, though. That's the thing, RJ. You don't understand how big professional filmmakers do it now. Because yeah. if I just give the audience what they expected and what they wanted, which would actually make me a lot more money, and they'd be Hard. much happier with me, I can actually piss off all those people and make no money, and I could destroy yeah. Disney. <laughs> let's, 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 let's kill the Waynes again. But this time... <laughs> Thomas actually hired the hitman to kill Martha, and he wasn't supposed to die. Well, see now you see now, now you're a big time filmmaker, my friend. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah, that, that all needs to change. <laughs> and, and 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 Batman's entire reason for existing is is gone. Look, I've got I've got backstory that actually could qualify Ray one. to use the name Skywalker. I, I got you one. An assassin comes back from the future five minutes before. His mm. parents get it, and they kill him because they know who he is. That's something that Reverse Flash would do. <laughs> let's, 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 let's go. Yeah, let's go back and kill you know uh, Barry Allen's mom over and over and over again. <laughs> See, I well, mean, these are people. these are these are people. Well, first of all, most uh, I think most producers are very disconnected from the audience to begin with. They're just different generations. What they think is cool is not what the movie going audience thinks is cool. That's already kind of a foregone conclusion. And these are smart guys. They should know that um, going into it, but they kind of want to put their own, their own stamp on everything. Uh, like right now, right now, uh, the crow trailer just dropped. Okay. Now I can actually accept the trailer as is. If if they just changed one thing, if, I wish they would hire me for their PR. If they didn't make it Eric Draven and Shelly, yeah. because the characters are different anyway, right? The story is different. The background is different. The the backstory is different. Everything about every everything about the whole. It's not even goth. It's not even you know Eric Draven's story is was told, and the it's hook and and the hook. Yeah, I know. Cat cat's disappointed. What? She gets over her. It's me. not even goth. It's not even goth. It's but more rock and rolly rap. They got there in the Halloween. But but you know what? I could accept this movie just fine if if because the hook of the movie is the crow. The hook of the movie is not Eric Draven. Exactly. Okay, the Eric Draven story was perfect, just the way it was. It was like it, it actually encompassed an era and encompassed like the filmmaking, the soundtrack, yeah. everything about it. And plus, everybody loves Brandon Lee so much, right? And then the tragic end of you know you don't retread that hollowed ground as it were right? Right, right so you do a new crow movie in fact every single crow movie that you do from here on out should different. be completely different characters with yeah. different tragedies different. that the crow decides is so awful that he wants their souls to stick around until they make it right but make it completely different stories well, right I now mean, there are so yeah. many different stories they could have they could have went to oh yeah it. exactly exactly i mean yeah. she think it, and then you, know, you then you reuse footage from the crow and you it's like, you know, who the hell was that guy? Haven't you ever heard of the crow? Right. Let exactly. The, and the then legend, you flash back. You yeah, the legend scene. lore that there were, there, there have been other crows before. And it's, it's actually in the dialogue of the trailer that they actually say uh, in the, in the over, in the, in the voiceover that it's like, Oh, like, you know, sometimes you like, you know, the crow takes your, soul to the land of the dead and blah 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 but when something happens that's so bad that soul can't rest so the soul the crow lets you stick around until you make it right kind of situation so i'm just like the setup is it's there there's no reason to retread over eric and shelly's story yeah. yeah especially when you're not honoring it at all it's not an homage at all but it is still a love story but it's just a very different vibe very different era very different characters so why name them eric and shelly you know, have them be new characters. And I, I bet everybody would have accepted the trailer like a thousand percent better. It's just, oh, cool. It's John Wick with a bird and it's supernatural. We're there. Yeah. 
Hell yeah, I'll, I'll go watch any, that. Any other crew. It didn't have to be back into Eric Draven and try, trying to look. If it's a remake, I'm seriously disappointed because you don't remake good movies. You remake bad movies, people. <laughs> remake you go bad to movies, too, bad movies right. that had potential that should have been great, and you make them better. Well, you know, there there's certain things like in our culture, like the 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 tradition or the 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 niche or whatever. Like, you know, somebody's always gonna do a new version of Hamlet. Somebody's always gonna do a new version of something yeah. that's overarchingly, but when it comes to certain movies, especially with the way the crow was treated and the way the cr- people feel about it, and it is technically it's kind of it's too soon to like retread over Eric and Shelley's story. I want the uh, remake and- Citizen King. Well, see, I mean, it's, it's, it's that's good. fine. It's like, I don't, but you know, I don't feel that it has a hole in it. it needs mm-hmm. build. <laughs> I watched it. I watched it, and I, and and it reinforced what I knew. Uh-huh. The whole premise of the story was Charles Foster Kane died alone. Right, right, right. And he did because his maid came in and said, "Mr. Kane," and he's dead in the bed, and she covers him up. Who heard him say Rosebud? I want to know. I want to know right now. Because <laughs> that's what drove the rest of the film. What was Rosebud? What did he mean by this? Nobody heard him say it. They don't know. <laughs> so now it's a supernatural thriller on another level. <laughs> yes. He haunts, everybody... the, he haunts people. He, he, he hovers over the bed and says, Rosebud. Right. <laughs> so that's all we need. We just need Hamlet's ghost. <laughs> By the way, John, John John Wick pops John Wick. There you go. What 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 what? Got a got a John Wick coin, man. Hold up, hold up. That'll that'll get you a night at the hotel with. Uh... Got a small handful of them, actually. <laughs> How did you get that? You need to get a stack of them. You have to have a stack in a briefcase with foam with a hole cut in the foam. Uh, I don't have a briefcase stack. hole. Them, I do have a small stack. How did you get them, sir? And then you have to Bottom. bury it. And you got to bury it underneath your driveway so that way you have to pound it with a hammer to get it out. I've yes. never seen yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah I, I, I pay for things with these now. Like, hey, here, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> You can also get one of those blood oath coins. I haven't got one of those yet. I don't like, I don't like sticking my finger on things. <laughs> it's like, I need you to do me a favor. But first, here's a coin I need you to stab your finger with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stab your finger. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you again, once again, to the 74 people on the Critical Blast Twitter watching, the one person on the Madness Twitch. <laughs> Somebody's got to be on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I mean, we're over here like, uh, like just like, 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 randomly going into different conversations. So yeah, yeah. thanks for thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit. It, it, well, the show kind of got thrown a little bit askew, but we're doing fine as long as we get, as long as you guys get to cover everything you want to cover before we leave. That's what. I'm oh doing. yeah, yeah. So, In fact, pretty pretty soon I'll have to get going anyway. I probably have another fifteen minutes before I got to go. Going okay. off into the sunset, and then I'll be doing some stuff tonight online again. RJ, have you eat. noticed? Have you, have you noticed all the uh, crom appearances on this campaign? <laughs> have he sneakily reflected in things? Yeah, he's <laughs> hanging out with Nira everywhere. Man. He's like, there he is, looking this way. There he is, looking that way. He's everywhere. I love it. I love it. <laughs> crom is everywhere. Bill. Covers, Bill. Yeah, yeah, we got some. This is the regular, uh, the regular main cover, and uh, of course, there's uh, like most, uh, almost everything, as far as I know, is available in the add-on store. So, whatever tier you end up uh, picking, you could still mix and match and add some extra goodies if you want to. Um, I think the only thing uh, is the sketch cover it comes as a pack. So, if when you buy this, the the blank sketch cover, it does come with issue one and issue two. Because uh, we didn't offer issue one on the first campaign, right. so this was kind of like a, a small way of making up for that. But everything else should be available in the uh, in the add-on store, so you know, don't feel that like you have to get a tier and possibly like you can, un- unable to mix and match and get like something else that you would like to get. 
Look, guys, six bucks will get your book too. Yeah, Tom's crazy. It's like six dollars for the regular for the regular physical issue. Um, I know you guys want all the art. You want all the badass Bill Ma stuff, but six bucks gets you the book. Okay. Um, look, you can see my broke ass up in there. Six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> If it wasn't for people like Bill and Tom, I wouldn't be able to read comics half the time. I'm just saying. Uh, uh, Lucifer, uh, Tanner, all these guys that put out the $5 books, man. Yeah, I love the guys. They're the ones that make it so that I get to read most of this stuff. Yeah, that's like that's like, uh, that's like that's like shelf price. That's like uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's monthly that's monthly good book shelf price at the shop right there. Now, talk about the Pyroneer at well, you know what the for for this uh, Thad Rhodes was the artist that did this, and I realize I always have to disclaimer when this cover comes up because I know that AI art has been around for about twelve weeks, and uh, and there's a lot of it floating around, and you're wondering what is AI art and what is not. Um, this is an artist who's been doing digital art like this for about twenty five years or so, like long before AI was was able to do this sort of stuff. Um, so this is about two weeks of work for him. Uh, to get this done. No AI art was was used in his cover. In fact, when you see the book, when it's actually in print and you're holding it, you'll be able to actually, underneath the, uh, the all the digital rendering and stuff, you'll be able to kind of see his his pencil drawing underneath it. And and we're going to post his black and white uh, pencil drawing up for people to see too a little bit later on, just so just so people can see what, you know, that it's, it's, just, it's just digital art and uh, traditional art kind of like meeting in the middle. So that covers 15 bucks. Then you got the Dark Sea sketch cover. Got the and sketch cover, issues one and two there. It's like he's got a got a little uh, thing thing there, so that way we can. I know that uh, some some of the graphics like have like you know he's got the front and back cover pictured, so you know don't let that throw you off. That's just so he's just. He's... In there, we'll take her shirt off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Nera. Which which actually meant more rendering, not less. So it's because <laughs> he had to take the shirt off and then actually make those. He had to rebuild, so. <laughs> he had to rebuild the abs and then all that other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he had to build it from the ground up. You know, it's like, that is somebody, awesome. so, somebody was saying it kind of looks like a Captain Morgan ad a little bit. Man, <laughs> it would make me want to drink. It's like, where's the rum? <laughs> and it's this, the cat mouse. Where's yeah, the, the cat, cat mouse, cat, cat mouse variant cover. That this this came out so so cool. I love the way this came out, and and there's actually a, a mermaid uh, aspect to the story that's actually in the book. So that's uh, that that's the reason that this cover is featuring Mermaid Nira X. And we have Tony Moy. He did this. Uh, his take on Nira X is really really cool. It's especially it's I, I love the watercolor style that that, right. that watercolor look that he's got going on, but also like the, the way he tackled. The character is very unique to him, so it's like I, I like uh, I like the way she's looking. I like the way it's looking. And and thank you, Thomas, for keeping these things in order so that we can go right down the list. Right, look right. At, look at that. Oh, but there's one. A retail cover, all art retail cover, thirty dollars. So yep. that's the Virgin cover. With no right, logo. it's a Virgin. It's a Virgin cover. Exactly, exactly. Just no logos and stuff like that. And and no banner across the bottom saying thirty dollars. It's just yeah, just the yeah. art, <laughs> just like that. Piece. Just like that. There you go. That way that avoids the confusion. Just having a picture like that. And uh, Bill Moss all out action cover. Yeah, <laughs> which That's you can actually, which you can win. Possibly show. you could win the original art from that cover. If, uh, oh, there you go. There's the original art for that cover right there. So uh, he was talking about earlier. Right. Doesn't doesn't matter what tier you guys end up getting, your number is going to get thrown into the mix, and Tom will pick out a random number to be the winner of this art. Yes, that's how we do it. Bill. Signed by Bill. the crossover. The crossover we need, Bill, is we need a Nira X Cherry Pop Tart cover. I know you can make that happen. <laughs> I, I, that that would make me happy. Actually, that's not that's not a bad thing. <laughs> a book, not, not a cover, a book. We, we need we need that we need that story. As long as Crom can be a fly on the wall in that one, I'm totally down. Totally down. <laughs> so now we got the of course the uh, the dressless regular uh, all out action cover. So that we see it with no logos and all that good stuff. 
And then the add-on store, it's not a tier unto itself because I added it on after the uh, the campaign went live because I was getting some messages asking me, is there a nude version of this particular cover? Because they were just wondering if there was going to be. Um, so I just made sure that there was. But it's in the add-on store only. So you need to pick a tier, like any you know any of the tiers, um, any of the physical tiers, so that we have access to the, uh, the add-on store. And then you could pick out the, the nude version of this cover. And I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's he's got a uh, <laughs> he's got a he's got a thumbnail. I'm I'm just trying to tell you, Crommet fit right in with those two. <laughs> that's that's Doc Blaylock, our great dater. <laughs> got a credit. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know this. This is uh. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Cat Mouse. Yeah, Cat Mouse yeah. with the uh, with the nude cover for the Cat Mouse cover. I'm gonna have to ask her sometime. Where does she get a reference? Ah, uh, you'll have to ask her because I don't micromanage. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't looked over. I haven't looked over her shoulder at her uh, at, at her work ethics since uh, since she was probably like God, like ten years ago. So I'm, she comes I'm, up with new art, and I'm just amazed by it. So I'm just like, you know, she's yeah. she's actually been in the industry well now. What's that? I, I don't feel like I know her well enough yet to answer that. So you know, maybe I'm, someday. I'm just sitting there thinking the bills at the house going. You okay in there? I'm drawing, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm 26 now. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, I mean, I know where Bill gets his reference. Oh yeah, I, mean, I look. I look in the mirror usually. <laughs> I'm a little overweight, so I just, I make I just make sure I shave and wax. <laughs> no, see, you, you look at Bill's. Bill's got that old bolt-on look. You know, the completely softball round. Right, mm -hmm. and and cats look like they sit more genuine. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, it's, it nobody <laughs> nobody can draw a woman's physique better than a woman. Okay, that's that uh, Michael yeah. Linsner, uh, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Linsner. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Gravity, exactly. Yeah, much more natural, much more. I'm very cartoony, and I'm very, yeah, like I'm very, it. I'm very manga anime influenced. You know, all of my characters, are, my, my characters are unquestionably cartoons. <laughs> Bill says, they will be round. Yes, very round. <laughs> you know, at a panel one time, uh, I was asked about, you know, because we were talking about physiques and about uh, having unrealistic proportions for your characters. And the, the question was in regards to, and there was a lot of uh, women and girls in the audience when we were doing this panel. And the whole point of the question, I think, was to say, why do you want to look, why do you want real women to look like this? To which I would always answer, that's not the case at all. This is how I want my cartoon women to look. Mm -hmm. This is not how I want my real people around me to look. You know, it's like if you took, uh, if you took one of my cartoons and actually made it into a real person, the length of the legs and the rib cage, and it's like, she'd kind of be a freak of nature, but it makes a cool cartoon. But now you know, not. it's Can an expression. It's an expression. It's not my critique on how women should look in real life. If, if it's gonna, if, if it's gonna, if everybody around me, like female, are gonna look like that, but I'm gonna look like some super stud Conan looking dude. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's a two way street because, like, all of my male characters, like their <laughs> shoulders are as big as my head. Yeah. You know, somebody was walking around with shoulders that big, it would look ridiculous. You'd, you'd call a doctor. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's come on, it's all objectivity. People, it's objectivity, and plus, and plus, there's a crossroads too. There's the way that I, in my mind, want to make the character look, but then the crossroad where that meets is where how good is my ability to make it look as well as I want it to look in my mind, and that comes down to you know, experience and talent and practice. And, you know, so my art has a limit. Like what I would really love to do is draw very realistically, like Adam Hughes. Adam Hughes is one of my heroes. right? And the way that he draws with those realistic proportions, I mean, that's like a goal for me. But everything I draw comes out like a cartoon. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just there, there's a difference in, in our styles and it's just, it's a huge thing. But, you know, in my brain, I'm thinking... 
Yeah, Frank's show is great. Yeah, Frank's stuff is is great, and it's like much more real. Good looking, realistic. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. And it's like you know, he's, you know, and and thick. He's not afraid of drawing like he he doesn't draw like you know very skinny uh, frames or figures or you know they're actually like like bigger figures, and it's like they look so cool. It's, I I love the way he draws. Dude, and there's come on now, don't forget the mouse pad. Don't forget you got the mercy mouse pad. Yeah, you know the mouse. I, I twisted uh, Tom's arm on the first campaign that we started doing some of these mouse pads because, uh, I like I said, I love manga. I love, and it's kind of a, a checklist, a little checkbox for me to check off. Is like, oh man, I, I want to have my own booby mouse pad or my own three D mouse pad with my characters on it. So yeah, Tom is very good at finding manufacturers that make all of the things that I want. <laughs> so <laughs> got the metal cover. You got a Tony Moy metal cover. Tony Moy metal cover. Yep. I bet this is going to be badass in metal because I have some yeah. metal covers. I know what they end up looking like. Yeah, I'm look. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like in the metal. Yep. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, there's Crom again. He, he's right there. He's right there. Every time I turn around. <laughs> there's a little bit of interior preview for for everybody to see. And that's what I've been doing for the past uh, you know, couple of weeks during during the campaign. I've been drawing live uh, interior pages for people to see. So it's like kind of give people a peek into what the story is looking like. There's Waffle. It's Waffle. That's He's waffle. expensive. He's expensive, folks. Please, please buy some books. <laughs> little, little, little man needs treats. <laughs> and there's the ladies. There's the ladies. These are the uh, two acrylic standy figures uh, that we have uh we actually had two, two in the first in the uh in the first campaign two new characters for this campaign and then for issue three we'll have two more characters plus a little diorama a little background for them to kind of like uh so we could set them all together and be be pretty cool kind of like pillowcases kind of sum up pillow yeah case. yeah regular regular pillow it's a uh, you know therapeutic don't be alone you know, it's, it's it's lightning outside. You know, you, you want to feel comforted. <laughs> Got an enamel pin. Get somebody to hug. <laughs> you just don't want to be alone, man. Got some awesome artwork uh, by Mog, Mog Park. Mog Park. And, I, and I'm pretty sure there's only six of those available. I'm not sure where it's at right now. but And these are just samples, um, just to show you the style that she's going to draw the, the characters in. She's going to be drawing Cyber Angel characters, obviously. So, Good And we've got some sketch cover. Yeah, we've got some sketch cover and some uh, some commission tiers towards towards the bottom of the campaign to read, read up on all that good stuff. You can get a Bill Moss commission right there, 150 bucks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. 175 bucks if you want colors on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a we got a a safe for work tier, and I think we have a not safe for work tier. So that's you know like, what I watched. Everything's, everything's there. You know what I watched yesterday? What did you watch yesterday? I watched Red Sonia, Queen of Plagues. Yesterday, I don't think I've seen that. I haven't it's, seen it. It's on. I want to say Tubi, but it could be one of the other ones. I think it was on Tubi. It could I'll, be on Tubi or right. not Tubi. <laughs> there's the uh, there's the uh, thoughtful floating in the water Nira X cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh there, there's that there's that nude all action cover. Yeah, there you go. Somehow their tops all fell off during the fight. Yeah, know you know, doing. fighting is rough, dude. It's like <laughs> off is flimsy. You know, swords are sharp. Standy yeah. set number one. Mm -hmm. Challenge yeah. coin. Near yeah. X challenge coin. Yeah, still got some coins left. RJ coins. Mm -hmm. And the body pillow. <laughs> and the body pillow. I think he, he only had like three or four left from the first campaign. So he's, he's making sure that they're available. And those are Technically, huge. That's literally. a body pillow case, right? Yeah, that, that thing is it's literally it's it's as almost as tall as I am. It's 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 a huge. I got a hanging, I got one hanging in my in my supply room that's it, it's, not like included. A, it's a it's a banner you know it's like the thing is so big you go people all kinds of stuff all kinds of good stuff all kinds of good stuff and then we're almost at the end of the campaign this is this is the time to jump in and be part of the crew is this is this saying 10 copies of each of these issues 
on the retail bundle? The retailer bundle was was his deal for for retailers. Let me see. Yeah. Ten copies of the following issues. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear that up with him just to be sure because that's what it yeah. sounds like because he doesn't have ten things listed. That so, would be 50 so it seems so it seems like it's or yeah, ten copies of each, of each issue. Yeah. That yeah. would be a very smoking deal for any retailer. I'm just saying, because that's like two dollars and twenty five cents a book or you know, something. Yeah, he's like really that. he's really getting close to, to like original diamond prices back when I was first starting out. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have to talk to him about that right now because I do know a couple people that own stores. Bob Park Sketch, we talked about that. Early Bird, all out. Action cover, $25 every episode. Early Bird, dang, it's over. Um, Bill Moss Commissions, that three people pick those up on that tier. Three people take those on that tier. Yeah, you're good. You're doing just fine, my friend. But uh, I want to see want to see this thing blow up on the last day people yeah blow that would be that would be totally respectful. amazing if we can just break 12k that would be so awesome yeah well uh, hey i think it'd be great if you got to 15 and unlock one more stretch goal before it's over um <coughs> we're gonna unlock another stretch goal that would be that would be dope that would be dope yeah. that make me very happy <laughs> but we do have the die cut keychain we yep. have the uh What's that saying? Uh, Mira X Pro Art. What is it a sketch card? Yeah, it's more like the pre-art. It's because uh, oh, what it is those 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 two images that you're seeing right there. Those those are the that's the art that we used for the mouse pads for the first two mouse pads that we did. So there's a Nira X uh, 3D mouse pad from the front, and then there's an Evil Nira mouse pad that we did from the back. The Evil Nira one is actually a little bit different than the mouse pad because because of the template. On the mouse pad, I needed to have both of her legs pointing down, or else the mouse pad template looked really weird. So, but on the original art, it's uh, on the original image, uh, we can leave it the way it, it was to start out with. So, it makes a good little print. Good stuff. Good stuff. Bunch of stuff. Got a funded print. Got a near edge sticker. Got a mercy sticker. Got retail cover signed on the signature plate. Yep, yep, yep. It's all action, people. It's all action up here with Bill. It's, it's all action, action all the time. <laughs> That's what I keep telling. You. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But thanks, yeah. Thanks to everybody that that is already backing the campaign because where we are right now is already uh, amazing. I'm already like super happy. I'm very excited to finish the issue. Make sure we get the book in everybody's hand. Um, so that's, I mean, that's what it's all about. All the little side stuff is great. It's gravy. Um, but getting the book in everybody's hand is really what it's all about. So and we is, will be doing a closeout fun. party right here tomorrow night. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Nine thirty. We're going to be here tomorrow night. Nine thirty. We'll see. We'll see how how the ball drops. <laughs> Bill, was there anything else you wanted to cover? I don't. I hate people. I hate leaving somebody and they go, "Oh man, I didn't get to talk about this." Or that. <laughs> no, no. Every everything is uh, is perfectly good. I made sure to to let everybody know about the about the contest uh, that you know they can win the original eleven by seventeen art if uh, if they're just a, a backer. Uh, Tom is going to pick out a random uh, winner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And uh, other than that, I'm, I'm busy drawing. There's not a lot uh, of other things going on for me right now. So I'm drawing the two books. And then in the meantime, of course, catching up on the commission list, which I'm very thankful that everybody's so patient with me uh, catching up on the list because it did. It, it got quite long. And uh, for, for quite a while, uh, Kat had been sick and we we're kind of like back and forth at the hospital, kind of put everything behind schedule uh, a lot longer than we usually ever get behind schedule. Um, so I'm just grateful that everybody has been super patient and, uh, you know, they, they'll email me and message me for updates and it's just like, Oh, like I'm getting there, but everybody's like super friendly and super cool about it. So, you know, that, uh, that, that means the world to me that, uh, that you guys continue to support, uh, you know, through good times and bad, man, because the, the, the art, uh, is what I live for. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's what provides life for me in the first place. So, uh, so thanks everybody for that. We appreciate you, man. You've been doing this for a while. Five just a minute. Just a few minutes. 
Been swimming in the small, small press for 30 years. <laughs> Big frog in a small pond. There you go. So, <laughs> I am going to be playing playing your trailer on the way out of the show, but we're, we're going to talk to RJ a little bit longer. I know you said you might have to be scooting. So I yeah, to- I got to be scooting this time, but we'll, we'll hang out again tomorrow night a little while. And uh, I know that RJ and I will be talking soon enough. We know that we have uh, some things going on. Uh, I just got to get past at least these uh, these two issues, and then I can start putting my brain on uh, on more gears. So that'll be a, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Cool, cool. Me too. Always good talking to you. I will see you tomorrow, my friend. All right, sounds good. See you guys. See you, RJ. See you, Bill. All right, bye bye. Good night, everybody. And now for you. <laughs> I'm gonna be scooting too soon. I soon. Say, same. The same question goes to you that went to him. Was there anything that you wanted to cover that we didn't talk about before you leave? I don't want you to go. Oh man, I should talk about that. You know? There will be new books in our catalog. That link I put in the chat. Uh, that link will change tomorrow because it's New Book Day, and we have more books that will be going into that catalog among which will be another adult coloring book. Um, Because apparently there's a market for that too. And we are uh, giving people the option to color something that had never been colored before. You know, I have an adult coloring book. It's not like... Not that kind. It's not X-rated. It's it's, uh, Badger. It's Mike Barrett's. Oh, sweet. Color therapy for adults is, I think, what he called it. I have one. Yeah, they're they're kind of cool. Yeah. It's a good book. You just get, the, get a box of colored pencils and you just sit there and you color. Yeah, you know? yeah well, I ain't messing with it because it's in perfect condition. Why would I do that? But you know what I'm saying. Well, it's like, well I now. Didn't, I didn't get two. If I got two, I had to get six because that's all the kids really wanted one. I had to get one for everybody. Yep. <laughs> let, let the little ones color the badger. What you do is you get a scanner, pops, and you just scan the pages, and then you can color as many times as you want. You just get a, you just get a. <laughs> yeah, you just get a. Yeah. Right now, I'm just getting the whatever I can to get this thing rolling. You go. Easier said than done, right? Just get a. Yeah. I I do have a meeting with uh, somebody that I hope is going to put us in in a little bit better position for going forward with Roku. Uh, yeah, I actually talked to other people. I, better than think I'm gonna be able to do this myself. Um but yeah I'm I'm talking I would I would be so scared to attempt it. You're a braver man than I am. But see this is what I want to do. I, I mean look if you know you were the perfect person for what you're doing. You had all the knowledge for the logistics for everything for the shipping you you researched it you did it all you knew before you started. Okay um there's a lot of, I jumped into this, into the deep end, start doing this with no idea what I was doing. And oh, but you've run the, shows before. You know what you're doing, talking to people. Yeah, I mean, that's not, the, that's not the business end of it. No. You see what I'm saying? I can run a network all day. I can set up shows. I can produce shows. I can do this all day. Can I make it profitable? Can I run it like a business? I'm not that guy. I need people that know how to do that. People that know how to turn what I do into something that you know helps people right that's you know that's what it's all about the more eyes we get on what you guys do the better i feel today there's 90 people watching i feel pretty good they're all watching yeah. your channel but i still feel pretty good because they were watching they saw <laughs> Bill, they saw brian and that's what it's all about i gotta get that twitter monetized yeah I don't know, man. They want like a million impressions or 10 million impressions or some crazy shit. I'm never well, gonna... 999,910 impressions to go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I just got my account back like five days ago. I already over 6,000 impressions. It's not like we don't generate, you know, but not that, not million. Eh. I'd have to go all political to do that. Anything. Gotta farm that drama. That ain't happening. No. No. That ain't happening. Um, we'll bring on a show here or there, like Rabble Rousers, that does conspiracy theories and stuff like that. And people can get their fix for that stuff in the madness. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna degenerate into the 
e flapping and all that dumb shit. I just oh man, that's so cool. I guess so <laughs> but I want to see that. what somebody said. I'm gonna go watch their video. I'm not gonna watch you talking about their video. Yeah. Does that make sense yeah. to anybody? Yeah. <laughs> or you can, or you can be, you know, you, there's the people's like. I don't want to give that person the clicks. I'll wait till this person that I want to give the clicks is watching that thing. Uh, Dude, I, I, yeah. Um, and the, the react, I saw a reaction video to a reaction video <laughs> that was about a reaction video. Yes, you did. Just, just your story. I want to see how far, how deep the EFAP can go. It wasn't, you can't see it it, but I mean, it wasn't three different um, EFAPs of the news story. It was an EFAP of an EFAP of an EFAP of a news story. And I was like, why do you want the fourth generation version? Just go watch the news story. Make your own. Because they can. Because they can. I'm like, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I just won't never really care that much about somebody else's opinion of what that guy said. I'm going to go look at what that guy said and make my own opinion. It's called free thinking. <laughs> Everybody. I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Man. I can't even watch it anymore. I'll go on, I'll go to watch somebody's show and they'll be talking about what somebody else did on their show. And I'll be, come on. I don't even just hang out to find out what it's about. I'll be, I'll go. You know, it's fun having fun, people. Having fun. <laughs> You're not having fun. Why do it? Yeah. Are you having fun? Are you? I know I'm having fun. Usually. Usually. I've, I've spent some time. I spend more time recently getting frustrated with myself and yelling at things that cost me money now. Like, <sighs> I'm, 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 yeah. Yeah. it was fun making money and then I find things that are I'm doing they're like that's costing me money what the hell why can't we fix this mm. uh, well you know I anything I can help you with you hit me up you know what's up uh, I, I've, I've already talked to all the people who can help me with the things that are costing me money they're, they're working on it Everybody, I don't, I, want, lot, to, lot I don't of, want to help you with things that cost you money I want to help you make a money make a money help me make more money pops yes you know what's up um Everybody. We're, we're getting more books in, by the way, uh, this week. So this this stack doesn't represent, you know, everything we've done. Right, um, right. Um, I can't wait to get a picture of everything. You told me the other night too. You said, you said, watch mail books pop, watch mailbox pop, and you know my ass been watching the mailbox every day since. Then. <laughs> yeah. My mail. Okay, okay. So I ordered all the books I needed for uh, the Devil You Know Best. You'll get an email. You'll get an email telling you it's on the way. So you know, don't don't. don't I'm don't. just saying, it's like you told me watch mailbox. So I was like thinking it was already in the mail. I start watching. The uh, you'll, you you you'll get that email with the tracking on it. But I I ordered like two cases of the books, and two boxes arrived. And I opened the first one, and it's somebody else's book entirely. It wasn't even mine. I'm like, what the hell is this? So you know, I called them up, and they're like, okay, that's a claim. Yeah, that's not the right book. We'll we'll send you the case of the right book. And in the meantime, I'm like looking at the person, I'm like, I'm calling them up. I'm like, hey, I got your books. Did you get my books? Because you, you want you want to, I'll, I'll send you your books if you send me my books and we'll just call it even. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting to hear back from them to see what happened. <laughs> They're probably mad at the other, you know. They're... Yeah, but I'm like, you know, you, you file a claim, they replace your books and, and we replace each other's books. We got twice as many books. Yeah. <laughs> They, they told me to destroy them or to uh, just use them, do whatever I wanted. They took, they took the loss. I'm like, huh? all right, so I got to move back out here in 40 minutes for Through the Madness, a late night version, because I might have a guest, Richard Embry from Blood of the Sword. Blood of the guy, Sword. Uh, fun My Comic. We're gonna, he's going to trip through the madness and trip through the front, fun my comic website with me. You know, I like to do that at least once a week where we go talk about some of the campaigns on Fun My Comic. Uh, so I got to be back out here in 40 minutes. So I am, if you have covered everything, RJ, I'm going to call this one. Man. I've covered it. Let's call it. I got to eat. I got a show in 40 minutes, too. <laughs> Who are you doing in 40 minutes? What are you doing? 
Ashley Land and the Unbreakable Argonauts. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, all right, I'm going to have to make sure I get that one, too. Uh, put that on my Twitter, would you? Will do. Thank you, my friend. All right. I'm going to play Talk some better, Box. I'm going to play some video stuff. What up is yours? Check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm. How do you end this thing? How do you put the where? There was the brakes on this bus. I forgot. Jazz how to hands. Drive. Jazz hands. Are